facing the Florence Eagles, three and two on the season, who could very well also be five and zero. They they lost two games this season, one in double overtime by one point, and then they lost last week um, by two points. So you know, typically you, you see your you, you, uh, your home team scheduling a, a not so great opponent for homecoming. Uh, Coach Lawler went the opposite route. He said, give me the Florence Eagles. Three and two and, and, and a heck of a ball club. We're looking at them warm up right now, and, and these kids got some size on them. Uh, but have no doubt that our Hawks will be ready. You know, the Petal Panthers had some size on them as well, Dre, and uh, we played very well on that up in uh, Petal versus the Petal Panthers. So um, as we uh, – as we go through this, uh, about 15 minutes left in this uh, Eric Underwood pregame show, brought to you by Pawpaw's Campus and Cars, located in Picayune, Mississippi. Uh, Dre is going to give you the defense stats uh, last week versus Van Cleve, and then he'll give you the year-to-date stats on the season for the Hawks defense. Uh, last week against Van Cleve, leading the way in tackles for the Hawks was Jeffrey Hopgood, who had 16, two for a loss, and then one sack. And you had Dante Taylor, who had two, Trey Robinson with four, Casey Wheat, nine tackles, one for a loss. Aiden Taylor, eight tackles, one for a loss in the sack. Tyran Ramsey had three tackles, and then the tone setter to start the game, the pick six that uh, eventually, you know, that, that set the tone for the Hawks and gave them way. Did it, and it also earned him the dip seafood steak, uh, seafood and steak player of the game, and he was happy about that when I gave it to him. He's like, for real? And I was like, hey, you set the tone, kid. Like, you uh, – you know, when you can get a defensive touchdown like that after your team goes three and out and the opposing offense's first drive, literally first pass of the of the game, first play of the game, and Tyron Ramsey takes it in. I want to say it was from like 16 yards out or so. It uh, puts the team on the – the Hawks on the board. Uh, that You get the you get the, the, the card right away, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you had Christoph Gagne with eight tackles, one fair loss. Julian Santee with 13. Jackson Knight, six – one for a loss. Gabe Fricky with five and then a sack. And you had Leonard Kemper with three. Devin Biddle had six tackles, two for a loss and a sack. And then you had the big man in the middle, Bryce Ladner, nine tackles, two for a loss. There you go. A uh, couple of names you uh, pointed out last week had some big games on defense. Aiden Taylor with that sack now gives him six sacks on the season. And Dre, uh, the only other player in the, in the conference or the district – with that many sacks, is the kid that's going to uh, Florida, Jamonte uh, Walker, I think is his name. Waller. Waller over in Picayune. Um, and so he's tied with a guy, a D1 Florida Gator uh, commit with uh, most sacks on the season. So, you know, praise to Aiden Taylor. He's been balling this year on defense. And look for, uh, you know, Aiden maybe to get another one tonight if uh, – the Florence Eagles dropping the, dropping to the shotgun because uh, the word has it this is uh, this team runs the wing tee. Another one with a, another player with a big night. If y'all hear that static or whatnot, I'm, I apologize. I'm trying to figure it out. Another player with a big night was coming up and, and uh, sealing off the edge and coming up out of his position and making some tackles was a uh, Christoph Gagne. You know, eight tackles for a defensive back. Now, usually when you see that, you're like, man, uh, what's he doing? Like, he's – are they getting big chunk plays and he's making these tackles down the field? That was that was the that was the opposite of what was happening. Christoph Gagne, uh, Christoph Gagne was coming off the block and he, he was coming up and making tackles. And it shows because he had one that was a tackle for a loss. And then in that situation, if I remember correctly, it was a huge tackle for a loss when he uh, came off his uh, blocker and made a, a great play on the, uh, the running back. Um, so, Dre, uh, update us on the stats for the for the season for these uh, Hancock Hawks defense. You have uh, Jeffrey Hopgood, who was the Coast's leading tackler last year. He has reclaimed his throne as the Coast's leading tackle through five games. With 68, he has 10 for a loss, an interception, and three sacks. And you got Dante Taylor, who has 11 – 11 tackles with an interception. Michael Acker with two. Trey Robinson, 17. Blake Hawes, 13 in interception. Alex Vincent, five. Neil Acker, two with an interception. Casey Wheat, 49 tackles, six for a loss. Aiden Taylor, 42, 11 for a loss, and his six sacks. Tyrann Ramsey 
25 tackles, one interception. Christoph Gagne, 29 tackles, two for a loss. Julian Santee, 59, 58 tackles, five for a loss. Then you have Jackson Knight with 19, three tackles for a loss. And one sack. And then you have Gabe Freaky, 16 tackles, one for a loss. Leonard Kemper, 13, three for a loss with the sack. Bryce Ladner, 29, eight for a loss. A fumble recovery and a sack. Devin Biddle, 12 with five for a loss. And you got Jerry Smith, six tackles, one for a loss. And then Logan Ladner with two. So that's uh, all the players that have played defense and uh, contributed on the defensive side of the ball thus far this season. Um, updated stats and uh, we have one defensive touchdown and like we said Aiden Taylor you know you Dre you, you brought it up Jeffrey Hopgood reclaimed the, the most tackles on the coast so far he had it last year He's, he has it right now and you know 10 tackles for a loss 68 total I mean we can't say it enough, like, how much of uh, a student of the game this kid is. Um, he prepares very well. I mean, I think it helps a little bit that his dad is, a, is the, one of the coaches. And uh, so I'm sure he's just constantly watching film, whether it's offensive side of the ball or defensive side of the ball. But an absolute student of the game and the quarterback of our defense. And it shows with 68 uh, total tackles, 10 tackles for a loss. And, um, you know, just a, just another number that pops out to me um, as of right now is the 42 tackles and 11 tackles for a loss. One more tackle for a loss than Hopgood, who leads the coast and, and the team in the six sacks. That's just so impressive to me right now, Andre, with, uh, you know, playing five games, you averaging a sack a game. You know, that means that kid's motor is running constantly. Now, we're going to have to keep an eye out. Marching through the center of the field at the Haycock High School. With as we were uh, looking for Tyron Ramsey at the end of the Italian game last week. Um, and uh, if you remember, I mentioned it looked like he came off like limp at one point. He was kind of, kind of hobbling, but he continued to play. Uh, let's, let's keep an eye out on that angle. The head guard is Cadet Captain Randall Vanier. The left guard is Cadet First Lieutenant Bailey. The left guard is Cadet First Lieutenant Bailey. You know, just amazing, amazing. And Julian Santini, he's, he's right there behind Hopper. Ten, ten tackles behind him. That, that combo of Hopgood and Santee, you know, might be one of the best uh, linebacking duos on the coast right now, Drake. Well, yeah, well, Santee, I forgot to mention, he's third in the coast on tackles. So there's not much separation between him and Hopgood there. There you go. Third on the coast and, and the first on the coast in tackles. And, you know, so if you got first and third, right, and we're not talking about baseball, folks, but you got the first and third, that, that means you probably got the top linebacker duo on the coast, and I'm going to claim it right here. The Hancock Hawks got the top linebacker duo on the coast. Um, when we come back, Dre, Dre mentioned uh, what we have on the round. Uh, the league is not very much. Uh, I think there's only a couple other games, and we'll probably try to look for maybe another game or two to kind of just uh, speak about maybe. Uh, a little later on, but when we come back, uh, Dre will talk about the games that we have in district that are playing tonight along with uh, your Hancock Hawks. Again, this is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. And you're listening to the Eric Underwood pregame show brought to you by Pawpaw's Campus and Cars located in Pinkyu, Mississippi on WRJW 1320 AM and 106.9 FM. And we'll be right back after these messages. You can say goodbye to the guesswork. We make it easy as one, two, three. When you come by Papa's Camper City for a trailer or RV. Hey, friends, Papa's Campers in Picayune is not that far from where you are. Only 35 minutes from the Hattiesburg Pine Belt area and the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Make that short drive to Picayune and you'll be glad you did. Whether it's a new or used trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome, Papa's Campers has you covered. Check out Pawpaw's inventory at rvbestprice.com. That's rvbestprice.com. Pawpaw's campers having fun, selling fun. Pawpaw's campers and cars, that's all you need to know. Great service, great price now, isn't that nice? You're going to love the way we deal. Pawpaw's campers, city and big sky youth. Yeah, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You're going to love the way we deal. Of the media protection of the football team, the fans, the band, 
the dancers and cheer team, Hi, welcome. the students, I'm Carrie, and, the and I'm Mackenzie. Are you ready to roar with the best here at Pearl River? We're inviting you to join our growing Wildcat, Wildcat family. family. Pearl River continues to make headlines as the fastest growing community college in the state, all while putting our students first by not increasing tuition and developing more opportunities for successful careers. Come be a part of history by joining our Wildcat family where we show out our main character energy. Just visit prcc.edu and roar with the best. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing the game live here at Brett Farfield in Kill, Mississippi, a.k.a. The Nest, where your Hancock, Hancock Hawks take on the Florence Eagles tonight. Homecoming night, homecoming 2023. Hawks looking to go. And look at these jerseys, Dre. They just interrupted me. Gray jerseys, red pants, blue helmets. Hawks looking to go 6-0 and in the season. Hawk captains, the captain's coming out for the Hawks. Is uh, that's uh, 18 Gavin Bobbitt, number 12 Dylan Moran, number 53 Jerry Smith, and Zach Galong. There you go. I, I knew two of them. I was trying to find out uh, 18. I haven't heard much from Bobbitt this season, so I was trying to look at the roster real quick. And there you go, Dre gave you the captains on the night, and uh, four seniors representing the Hawks tonight. And those uh, those uniforms look pretty sharp, right? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it looks like the Hawks have gotten some u new uniforms this season, not the traditional ones that we're used to seeing. And you know what I like? Uh, I mean, everybody wants their name on the back, but these jerseys, they, they don't have their names on the back. And I guess, you know, it's the old adage, you know, you play for the name on the front of the jersey, not the name on the back of the jersey, Dre. Yeah, you, uh, you, you know, when you play for Hancock, you play to represent the H, and that's what's on the front of the jersey is the H. Absolutely. And, uh, we got about um, four minutes Left in this Eric Underwood pregame show brought to you by Papa's Campus and Cars, located in Picayune, Mississippi. Uh, Dre, you want to take us around the league? Uh, yeah, there's only going to be two games going around on the district other than this one. You have Hattiesburg, who's traveling to play George County, and then you have South Jones, who's going to be playing Long Beach. So that should be a good one, folks, uh, that Hattiesburg-George County game. And uh, next week, the Hawks will be on the road again, right? I mean, uh, it's going to be the story of our life this year, folks. <laughs> We're going to be on the road again next week uh, uh, versus the West Harrison Hurricanes. So maybe we can bring the, the storm to West Harrison next week. If uh, But first, we got to take care of business tonight, Dre. We got the Florence Eagles came down, and uh, they're trying, they trying to claim the nest from us, Dre. They, they, they said uh, – you know, we know y'all call this the nest, but we might want to take this thing over, and then we're going to see what this Hawks football team is made made of tonight. Uh, so they just did the coin toss. Looks like the Hawks will be receiving the ball first, and they will be going right to left on your radio dial. Um, and the Florence Eagles will be getting the ball at the half. So that, you know, that's when you that this is where your strategy comes in. All right, we get the ball first. Okay, we have to score on the first drive, Dre. Um, you put that pressure on them, and you you come out and you play defense. So uh, if it's the other way around, you gotta you gotta get that stop. You gotta get that stop on their first offensive series. And but unfortunately, uh, it's not that way. And, and we've uh, we've got it to where the Hawks are going to be getting the ball first here to start the game. Again, this is the Eric Underwood pregame show brought to you by Papa's Campus and Cars located in Picayune, Mississippi. And we'll be right back after these messages. You can say goodbye to the guesswork. We make it easy as one, two, three. When you come by Papa's Camper City for a trailer or RV. Hey, friends, Papa's Campers in Picayune is not that far from where you are. Only 35 minutes from the Hattiesburg Pine Belt area and the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Make that short drive to Picayune and you'll be glad you did it. Whether it's a new age or a new age, Papa's Campers has you covered. Check out Pawpaw's inventory at rvbestprice.com. That's rvbestprice.com. Pawpaw's campers having fun, selling fun. Pawpaw's campers and cars, that's all you need to know. Great service, great price, now isn't that nice? You're going to love the 
way we deal. Bob Ross, Camper City, and Pick a You. Yeah, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You're gonna love the way we deal. Welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Bringing the game live here at Brett Fall Field, a.k.a. The Nest, in Kill, Mississippi. Homecoming night. And it looks like uh, we're going to get this thing started a minute early. Lawrence Eagles hopping onto the field, and then your Hancock Hawks receiving team are entering the field now. Back deep for the Hawks is going to be Zachary Galong. And it looks like the other one deep back. Is going to be Caleb Schaefer. Back deep in uh, Zachary Golan. Kicking off for the Eagles is going to be Hayden Boykin. See what Moran in this Hawks offense gets going. First drive of homecoming night. Going to be critical. And Boykin kicks a little onside kick in the middle, and he gets a good hop, and going to be returned by Kyson Kanan. And he just uh, he just falls on Hawks with decent starting field position. Looks like it's going to be at the 29-yard line. So Moran in the Hawks offense going to start first and 10 at the 29. And got ball first and ten. At Last time uh, we played a home game, Zach Galong, first play of the game was an 80 yarder. Moran right in the shotgun, Galong to his right. Man in motion, right to left. That's how good. Hand off to Galong. Galong, big hole on the left side. Break, breaks a tackle, makes a man miss, and brings it all the way to around the 49 yard line. So, first carry of the night on homecoming night for Zachary Galong is 20 yards and a Hawks first down. And, uh, you know, he almost broke that one, Dre. Moran in the shotgun, rolling right. Throws it out in the flat and goes incomplete for Zachary Galon. Incomplete. going to bring up second and ten for the Hawks. So here we are with Moran in the shotgun. Galong to his right. Receiver to the right, one receiver to the left. Man in motion, right to left. That's Hopgood. Hand off to Galong around the left side again. He puts his head down and off the left side. Makes it up just across gets a yard on the play. Going to bring up third and long for the Hawks. So after a 20 yard rush by Zachary Galong, Hawks go incomplete and then one yard and then now it's third and nine. It's a very crucial third and nine here. If you're the Hawks, you know, you got you to gotta pick up this first down because you want six on the board to start your first opening drive. It, it's, it's very critical when you get the ball first to, to put that pressure on that defense to let them know, hey, we're coming. Moran in the shotgun. Running back to his right. Moran looking to throw. Middle screen set up to Hopgood. And in and out of the hands of Hopgood. Don't know if he fully secured it. I think they said he did, and that's going to be a turnover on the Hawks and a fumble by Hopgood. So that was like a one-yard reception by Hopgood, and he got hit hard pretty good by that middle linebacker for the Eagles and knocked the ball loose. I just didn't see the football move. So I thought, it, you know, I didn't see him get upfield. He got hit right when he caught it, but um, – Great field position for the Florence Eagles. First and 10 on the Hawks side of the 50 at the 49. Florence runs the wing T. Quarterback for the Eagles is Luke Reed. Man in motion right to left. Hand off around the left side. It's going to be a jet sweep. And on the carry, looks like Xavion Quick. And that was he looked pretty quick on that play for a nine-yard carry. Around the left side. Ball is spotted at the 42-yard line. So, actually they spotted it at the 42. Seven-yard carry. So, second and three for the uh, Eagles. Under center is Reed. Man in motion. Hands it off around the 
right side this time. Same play, opposite way. And Hawks tracking them down, and that's quick again, getting to the edge. And gets enough for Eagles first down and going to bring up first and 10 Eagles at the 30, 37-yard line of Hancock. So Eagles moving the ball right now on the Hawks defense. Got a lot of movement, a lot of things going on on this Eagles offense in this wing tee. Luke Reed on the center. Gets the snap, hands it off to the fullback, and he tried. they tried to run the trap. And that was Xavier Smith on the carry, and I think that was uh, – That was Leonard Kemper who met him right away. At the line it might have even been a tackle for a loss. Yeah, he, he, he lost about six Leonard inches on Kemper that. On the stop by no game on the play. So Reed Second comes in the center. Wing T, wing T formation. They spread in the offensive lineman out. And in motion is to – And right oh, nice. away. Having any of that. Tackle for a loss by Jeffrey Hopgood. And he said, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, I'm about to hit you in the backfield. He shot the gap and made the tackle. He did not get fooled by the pulling guard on that one, Dre. No, you know, that's uh, Jeffrey Hopgood being the smart – athletic player he is, it's rare you see him get fooled on a play like that. Yes, recognizing the, the, you know, like I said, doing the film and doing the study work, recognizing what, what the tendencies are in that formation. Now they hop in the shotgun formation with three receivers to the left. Looking to throw a wheel route, and I'm a, intercepted by Christophe Gagne, and Gagne with a little bit of running room, and that's his first interception of the night. Great play right there, kid. Love to see it by the by the locksmith, Christoph Gagne, and he's hyped. Look at him. Yeah, I believe that's his first one of the year. It I was, I I was mean, waiting for him to get it. I mean, the kid probably should have about four or five, but, hey, not, not a better time to have one on, than on, on, on homecoming, Dre. So, Moran and the Hawks offense comes out. Better start position than last time. Hand off to Galonga on the right side. Galonga got a little bit of running room. Galong off the right side, picks up good yardage. Hawks starting at the 38. Galong brings it to about the 43. Pick up about four yards on the play. Second and six. Five-yard carry by Zach Galong. Going to be about second and five for the Hawks. Moran in the shotgun. Running back to his left. Moran rolling left. Looking to throw in the flats. Has a man in and out of the hand of Jeffrey Hopgood. Who had some green out in front of him. Again, the drop seats for the Hawks. So we're going to bring up a third and, and manageable right here. Third and five. No tie, Dito. Moran in the shotgun. Along to his left. Two receivers to the left on the wide side of the field. Moran tries to hard, hard uh, clap. Get the uh, Eagles to jump. They didn't budge. Looking over to to the sideline for the play call. Receivers moving in a little bit towards the hash. Man in motion right to left, that's Hopgood. Quick pitch to Galong. Galong trying to get the edge, has a man. Ball on his blocker, that's Biddle. Galong makes a man miss, cuts across the field. Great vision and great run by Zach Galong to the eagle side of the field. Stopped at around the 40, 43 yard line. That was about a 15-yard carry right there for Galong and the Hawks for the first down. Galong to the right of Moran. Moran gets a snap. Hand off to Galong up the middle. Galong oh, once again. brings it across the 40, oh, again, the right to the 40. So a three-yard carry right there for Zach Galong. Going to bring up a second and seven situation for the Hawks. Ball spotted at the Florence 40-yard line. Second down. Moran right in the shotgun, belong to his right, two receivers to the right. Gets the snap, hands it off to the left side. Following his block, hits the hole hard. Puts his head down, and Galong brings it to about the, what, 37, Drake? Yeah, right around there. Something I do see on the field is uh, the other senior receiver, Todd Dito. He just came on the field? Or was he on? He yeah. was already on the field. I didn't, okay. I didn't spot it until the play happened. There we go. Todd Dito's on the field, another threat. 
So it's going to be third and about four right here for the Hawks. Moran in the shotgun, Galong to his right. Moran calls his own number. And Moran on a keeper, works his way down to about the Moran picks up two yard yards line. and is going to be short of the yeah, first down. You got to imagine with them calling that play that they're going to go for it here on fourth downs, right? Yeah, when you know when you call a quarterback draw like that on uh, third and four, I think they're just trying to maybe get a little bit closer to go for it on fourth. And expect a uh, handoff to baby Galong right here. Moran in the shotgun, tries to draw him off sides. You got a receiver to the left and one to the right. On the left side of the line of scrimmage is Ty Dito. On the right side is Neil Acker. At the wingback spot on the right side is Jeffrey Hopgood. Moran in the shotgun. Gets a snap. Got a, got pressure. Throws the out route to Ty Dito and it's caught. And Dito puts a move on the defender. And Dito... Gets it to the about the, where they got it at, Dre? The 19? Yeah, it's uh, yeah at the 19-yard line. So 14-yard reception right there by Ty Dito. And right up the middle is Jeffrey Hopkins, the Hawks with the with the hurry-up offense. And Maury is signaling, hey, well, let's get another play right now. And Hopkins brings it to the... Four, so 15-yard carry right there by Hopgood. Moran looking over to the sideline by the, for the play call. To the right is Zach Galong. Hand up to Galong. Up the middle. Galong finds a hole Galong. and up the brings middle. it to around the so one. So probably uh, about a two-yard carry right there for the Zach Galong. Going to bring up second and goal for the Hawks. Maybe call another quarterback draw right here, Dre. What do you think? Moran in the shotgun. Galong to his left. Moran hands it off to Galong. Galong makes a man miss. And gets into the end zone for the Hawks score. Two-yard plunge right there by Zach Galong. And the Hawks take the lead 6-0 with 5 minutes and 11 seconds left in the first quarter. Your Hawks lead pinning the extra point right now. 6-0. And we'll be right back. After these messages. First Southern Bank. Simple, easy, and user-friendly. Come experience community banking. Featuring online services, 24-hour ATMs, and seven locations. In Picayune, Richmond, Colorado. It is up and it's good. And our 24-hour ATM in Korea. Member at the Number 34 and on the big same time off of all right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here at Brett Favre Field in Kill, Mississippi, a.k.a. The Nest. And right now, the Hawks uh, have the lead 7-0 to after a uh, two-yard plunge by Zach Galong. Hawks found a little something on that job, right? Yeah, uh, they got the interception on defense by Christoph Gagne and then uh, – Zach Galong, you know, Zach Galong and Jeffrey Hopgood on the running game carried the drive, and you had Moran dumping it off a little bit here and there. The big one was the 14-15 the yard pass to Ty Dito. It's good to see that young man back in action because, like we stated, he's another threat for this Hancock offense, and it's just good to see him healthy. And, you know, he made that catch, made some moves, and got a feel for a Hawks first down right there. Yeah, it's nice to have Todd out there because, you know, you now have the full triple threat of um, Morian going to Acker, Dito, and then the sophomore sensation, Caleb Schaefer. Absolutely. So Powell uh, getting ready to put the ball on the tee. Checking the old. Checking the old Twitter and uh, see if anybody's. And here we go, folks. Five minutes, 11 seconds left in the first quarter. Your Hancock Hawks lead 7-0. to zero. Powell made the extra point. And they, and they seem like they might have got that uh, that little issue fixed, Ray. Yeah, uh, Powell, you know, he's been uh, – he was – I think he was perfect on the extra points in last game. And he's perfect so far here tonight. He's been perfect the last two weeks. Uh, he, he does have four missed extra points on the – well, you know, you say missed, but uh, – you. 
literally all four of those were blocked. Uh, they, I guess they found the, the leak in that, in that spot and had it replaced. And um, he's been pretty much perfect from uh, here on out on that point. So uh, Powell kicks the, the sky kick. And the Eagles return it. Had pretty good field position to start uh, their second possession at around the 36-yard line. So it looked like the Eagles had a little bit of success, and then they went to they was forced with a passing situation. And uh, see what we do here. So it looks like an eye formation, handoff around the right side, fullback leading the way. And, uh, he's a pretty big back. That's Xavier Quick, and he picks up about about six yards on the play. Going to bring up second and four for the Eagles. Now, uh, I said it before, the Hawks' defense has always been pretty good against the run. So, look for them to be up to the task tonight. They'll see some different looks from this Eagles offense. Again, eye formation. And looks like uh, somebody got blown up in the backfield. Xavier Smith, the lead back, got put on his, his backside by, uh, I think that was uh, – Jackson Knight and uh, maybe a yard on the carry right there for Xavier. For Xavier Quick. So it's going to be about third and about three. Yeah, about three. Three and a half maybe. So we go Luke Reed under center. Looks like eye formation with two receivers to the right. Reed hands around the left side and Quick gets a field and Picks up about, about 16 yards on the play. And Eagles first down in, in Hawks territory. You got to come up clutch on those third down situations. Yeah, that's where you know look for your playmakers to uh, come up big and make the play and then get the defense off the field and some more in and the offense can get back on. You got to have uh, like a big guy like Kempler over there to hold that ground. So Reed. Eagles uh, back in the wing tee. Reed on the center. High, uh, hanging off the sweep and in the backfield right away. Julian Santee. And that looked like a WWF wrestling move right there, Dre. Right? Almost looked like you just picked him up and uh, dumped him, body slammed him. I mean, actually, that is what he did. <laughs> to be honest with you, that is exactly what he did, Dre. Right? Picked him up and body slammed him. Glad he didn't get a flag or something on that, but the kid jumped it. So wing T formation again. The, the Eagles offensive line does like this little up-down motion before getting set. Around the left side, that's going to be Titan Edmondston. And big pickup right there for an Eagles first down. We need that right side of our defensive line Very good enough for another first down to play like our Eagles. left side because they, they're getting oh, stuff on that. Uh, yard line. When they running left, they're picking up yards. Yeah, you know, you got to contain the outside edge there because it looks like that's where they're having their success at so far. Reed on the center. Wing T formation, man in motion. Hands it off on the trap up the middle and uh, going to be tackled by Kempler. Like number Maybe four, one yard on the play. That looked like that was Kimbler and Jeff Hopgood. You can always count on Jeffrey Hopgood to be around the ball. Second and long situation. So this is where your defense has to step up and, and, can, and you have to uh, make it a third and long situation, Dre. Right? Last time it was third and long, they, uh, we got the interception. So Reed under center. It's like they do this funky little shift almost. Man in motion, handoff around the left side, and gonna be tackled. It looked like Kimbler tripped him up, and uh, Bryce Ladner. Bryce Ladner followed it up, right? And that was uh, Xavier Smith on the carry again, and exactly what we needed. There was no uh, no gain on the play right there. It's third and long situation right here for the Eagles, right? Yeah, this is you know this is where you look for uh, your Bryce Ladner and your Aiden Taylor to come up and make the stop here. Absolutely. So they they stay in the wing tee on a third and long situation. Look for them to gain the edge, maybe. 
Try to hit the outside edge. Man in motion. Oh, he rolls right. Pressure in his face. And finds a big lineman and gets behind him and picks up the first down. Hawks had it defended very well. It was, a, it was like a roll, uh, roll out or like a bootleg left. It was defended very well, but uh, the quarterback had plenty of room on the right side and uh, picked up the Eagles first down. So Reed under center. Going to hand it off around the right side. Oh, he makes a move under the defensive back and gets into the end zone. And that was Dante Taylor on the missed tackle. Touchdown Eagles. And that was uh, Xavion Quick. So the Eagles get on the board here with 19 seconds left in the first quarter. And they make it a game, Dre. They tie it up before the quarter ends. Uh, pinning the extra point. 7-6. And we'll be right back after these messages. Physical therapy has evolved into specialized care for patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Dr. Jamison Dodd with Dodd Therapy Center in Picayune is LSVT Big certified for treatment of Parkinson's disease. LSVT Big trains people with Parkinson's good. to use their body and and improve movement for any activity, whether small motor tasks quarter. like buttoning a shirt or large motor tasks like getting up from a sofa or chair or maintaining balance while walking. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call today at 769-242-2636 or stop by at 405 <laughs> All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Bring you the game live on WRJW 1320 AM, 106.9 FM. You can also go to WRJW.com and click the stretch portal link if you uh, need to to listen to the game. Uh, so the Hawks give up a touchdown on that drive, and the extra point was good during the commercial break. So it's a 7 7 game, and it's. Uh, we're all tied up here at Brett Favre Field. Uh, you, you got exactly what you wanted, Dre. Um, defense, third and long situation. Uh, actually had pressure on the quarterback when he was rolling left, but he was uh, able to reverse field and find one of his big linemen. He basically just, like, got Led right. Away for him. <laughs> yeah, he got right behind him and used him as a shield. Like, and picked up, uh, like, 14 yards on that run. So, Looks like number 31, nonetheless, the Hawks get the ball back right here. And then, you know, it's this this game as of right now, Drake, could look like, and, you know, we mentioned it, this could be the toughest game we've played so far this year. This might be, this could, as it looks right now, could be who has the ball last. Yeah, uh, you know, it looks like so far it's going to be a very uh, back-and-forth game here with the Battle of the Birds and at the Nest. And the kicker kicks it oh, out of bounds on the far sideline. The far, side, far sideline. So the Hawks, I want to say, is going to get pretty decent field position to start this uh, this drive. So Moran in the Hawks and offense coming out on, on the field. Looks like Moran's going to be in the shotgun. Galong's to his left. Two receivers to the left. Those receivers are Caleb Schaefer and Neil Acker. You got inside coverage right here on Schaefer. Um, I would just run a seam right up the middle with Schaefer the way this guy's playing him because the safety's shaded to the left. See if Moran picks up on it. That guy's too far in like he's trying to play the run. Like he's trying to get an uh, edge on ca in case it's a handoff. And here's a handoff to Galong on the right side. Handoff, Galong, no running room. Safer comes out, and in comes Dito. Going to be a one yard loss. Nice, loss of a yard on the play. By Galong. Going to bring up second and 11 for the Hawks. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter, folks. Tied up 7 to 7, where the Hawks. Switch uh, sides of the field. We'll be right back that's gonna go after these messages. 
Check out this new 2023 Wildwood Lodge 40 FDEN destination trailer. This 40-footer has a front-end floor plan with a king bed, dual entry, and washer-dryer hookups. MSRP 76336, reduced to only 43987. You can see multiple pictures of this unit at rvbestprice.com. Make that short drive to Picayune. You'll be glad you did. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. I'm Jay Underwood. Bringing you the game live on WRJW 1320 AM, 106.9 FM. And at the start, about to start the second quarter here, and it's tied up. Your Hancock Hawks, seven. The Florence Eagles, seven. A battle of the birds tonight right, at the next. Second quarter, it's underway. Hancock's got it with a second down and about three yards to go. Morin in the shotgun, man, in motion right to left. That's Hopgood. Morin throws it. And that's going to be complete to Acker. Acker gets up field. Acker with a lot of room and looks like he picks up about 15 yards. 15 yards on the play and a Hawks first down. It was a nice play right there to uh, throw out the screen to Neil and he had Hop go to motion who uh, took care of Neil yeah. Acker's man and let him get inside the tunnel. Yeah, he comes in he comes in motion and gets that block and it was a pretty play. So Maureen in the shotgun. Running back to his right, two receivers to the right. Fakes the handoff. Throws the quick pitch to Acker. Acker makes a man miss. Almost breaks free of another one. And another 15 yards and a Hawks first down. As the, as the coast's top duo, connection-wise, connect for another 15. Yeah, and it looks like there's a Florence Eagle down on the field. There are There is an Eagle down on the field. Um, and we'll be right back after these messages. Dr. Hermaine Almonte, Chair of Surgery and Trauma Medical Director, Highland Community Hospital. Over the last 10 years, the Highland Surgery Department have grown exponentially. We have been able to add multiple services to our surgery department, which includes urology, general surgery, advanced laparoscopic surgery, ENT, as well as ophthalmology. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. For more information, go to highlandch.com. First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve its local community with two locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. You know they'll treat you right. Remember, when it comes to your vehicle shine, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. Now hiring at the Highway 43 location. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. I'm John Underwood. Bringing you the game live here in Kill, Mississippi on WRJW 1320 AM. And it looks like we might have just got the first flag on the night. 106.9 FM as well, folks. And it's going to be a false start on the Hawks. We're going to back them up five. First and 15 situation now for Hawks. Not at all, not exactly what you want to see after you know been putting together a pretty good drive here. Absolutely, Moran three uh, three for his last three, four for six on the night. So Moran in the shotgun, running back to his left, to, running back uh, motion right to left. That's top good. Moran rolling, looking to throw, finds it. Oh, and throws it just a little over the uh, outstretched arms of Zach DeLong as Moran reversed field and tried to get it to uh, DeLong, and it goes in and out of the hands. It's a little bit too high for Zachary. So going to be second and 15 for the Hawks. Moran looking to the sideline for the play call. Flipping some plays around. You got Neil Acker coming to the short side of the field and Caleb Schaefer 
Going to the wide side of the field. Morin in the shotgun, running back to his right. Hopgood at the wingback position to the right. Morin looking to throw. Throws the hook to Acker right on the sideline, right about the 31 yard line. And that'll bring up a third down. Third down and about four. So that was an 11-yard reception right there for Acker. Going to bring up third and four for the Hawks. Ball right in the shotgun, running back to his left, receiver to the right, one to the left. Gets the snap. It was a high one. But it's handed off to Galong. Galong puts his head down, and Galong picks up a Hawks right first side. down to the 24-yard line. Correction. Seven-yard carry right there for Zach Galong and uh. Oh, it's off it. carry. Carry good enough for first down. So first and 10, Hancock got it around the 29, right at the 29, Bars actually. Right at Hancock, remember, line. moving first left to right on your radio Hancock. dial. More running in the shotgun, running back to his left and running back to his right. Hand off to Hopgood around the left side. Hopgood makes a man miss. Gets up field and inside the 15 at the 14, Dre. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's just Jeffrey Hopgood. Uh, his great vision right there to see the hole and get in it and pick up the first down. Yeah, you know, that's the that's what they went to last week when we were struggling, uh, where they wasn't uh, focusing straight on uh, Galong. And then that was an 11-yard carry right there for Hopgood in the Hawks' first down. Moran, same formation. Hand off again to Hopgood. This time they shoot the gap a little bit. And Hopgood dives forward. Picks up about a yard on the play. Going to bring up second and around nine. Hawks can get a first down still right here, Dre. Moran looking uh, at the sideline for the play call. You got two receivers, one to the left, one to the right. Two running backs, also one to the left, one to the right. Moran gets the snap. Fakes the handoff, looking to throw it to Acker. It right, looks like that. almost a four-inch mismatch with a flag the on the play. The Hawks get hit with their second. What is that? False, false start? start? Second false start penalty. And it looked like that play would have been there, Dre. It looked like Acker had inside uh, leverage on the defensive back. And Normally when Acker has the inside leverage, him and Morin, they normally take advantage of it, and they uh, find a way to hook up. So look what the Eagles are doing right here. Now they're shading their outside linebacker more that way to make it uh, like a d disguise almost and try to – so Morin gets the snap. He rolls right. Braxton Johnson. And this is complete. going to be complete. There's a flag on the Another play. flag, flag on the Hancock, Hancock offense. And then these, these penalties are killing the drive. You can't have those. Uh, we haven't really been that much of a penalty type of team this year, Dre. And uh, we just had three on this drive. It's a call. You already know how I feel about penalties. Yeah, uh, they're never good, uh, especially um, when you're you know putting together a pretty good drive like the Hawks are right here. Yeah, so now it's going to be second and really long for the Hawks who had the ball at around the 14, and now it's spotted at the 29. So we just, you know, 15 yards of penalty, second, and a very long 25. Just try to pick up half the yardage back right here, making it like a third and manageable. Oh, you got the ball, makes a man miss, cuts back, back across the grain, makes another man miss. Acker with the block. And the long actually tried to use the middle, uh, umpire right there for it's a block as well. He almost, uh, you know, about a 10-yard carry right there for Zach Galong. Almost sprung it loose. Going to bring up third and 15 for the Hawks. That was a good job right there by Neil Acker to come back when he saw his running back cut back across the grain and, and pick up a block. Uh, actually, the, the little middle umpire actually got in the way. He's not there. Zach might score. Kind of hit him a little bit. Moran in the shotgun. Hands it off. Double handoff to Schaefer. Schaefer trying to look for the edge. Schaefer puts his head down and brings it to about the 
carry for Hancock. Brings it back to around the original line of scrimmage. Looks like you're brought down right around the 15 yard line. Actually, the, the 15 yard line. So that was a four yard carry for Caleb Schaefer. And it looks like the Hawks are bringing out the field goal unit here, Dre, for what field looks to be. On the field for Sam Powell. Looks to be a 32 yard Holding field goal attempt. Something we don't see very often is the Hawks kicking a field goal. And there's a flag. Flag on the play. Looks like it's going to be against the Hawks. See what the call is. Uh, oh, they're waving it off. I think they were trying to say that maybe like the center moved the ball or whatever, but the the white cap comes in and waves the flag off. So again, it's going to be a 32 yard uh, field goal to temp right here for Sam Powell. Normally we go to a commercial during extra points, but we got to watch this field goal attempt. Snaps good, kicks good. I mean, holds good, but the kick is blocked. But we're gonna get a rough in the kicker right here, possibly, and probably a Hawks first down because they hit Powell and they hit him hard enough to make his helmet come off. See what the call is right here. Oh, nope, they're waving the flag off. The ball Wave was the tipped. Off once again. So, Eagle's going to take all, uh, take over on the possession. So, the Eagle will take over. The ball was tipped, and he uh, ran straight into power. I don't know how he comes free just straight up the middle to yeah, block the extra I point. I mean, the field goal attempt. Uh, that was a little mind-boggling. I mean, the kid came straight through the middle. That's where he's supposed to be the tightest hat on the field, go to an extra point blocks. Uh, Eagles come out in the shotgun formation, hands it off around the right side, and going to be tackled right away. I think that was uh, Jeffrey Hopgood on the yep. tackle. Yep. Jeffrey Hopgood, and it's going to be about a two, three-yard loss. It's going to bring up second and 13 for the Eagles. Loss on the play of a couple yards. So you got Luke Reed in the shotgun formation again. Two receivers to the right. Fakes the handoff and tries to hit the seam and throws it a little too high intended for Avery Eldridge. Number four, Avery Eldridge. Goes incomplete and bring up a third and long situation. It was there, Dre. That's a big boy. Um. Running across the middle of the field right there wide open. Yeah, that play was there. It just was, The pass was just a little too high for the intended receiver. So let's see if the Eagles come back to that play later on uh, tonight. So shotgun formation again for uh, Reed and the Eagles. Running back to his right. Fakes the handoff. Looking to go deep. And tries to throw it and goes incomplete with the pressure by uh, Jackson Knight. Jackson we haven't really been uh, tracking the QB pressures the over here, but he, he was in Reed's face. Yeah, uh, Jackson Knight, you know, normally in these third third and long situations, that's where he shines and getting in the backfield and getting pressure on the quarterback right there. So the uh, Eagles have to get a, a blocked field goal and uh, starting off at around, the, I think it was the 20-yard line, go three and out and going to punt it back to the Hawks. Flag on the play. Back deep is Trey Robinson, and it's going to be down down right at midfield. Let's see what this flag flag is. Looks like uh, a legal shift on the Eagles, and see if the Hawks make them uh, punt this over to gain a little bit more, uh, a little better field position. Doesn't look like it has more in the offense is coming on the field. Been declined, the play of been All right, so Warren and the Hawks offense with uh, six minutes, 14 the seconds the left in the half. Great field position. 
Kid asks for better field position. You start right at the 50. Moran in the shotgun, running back to his left. Two receivers to the right. Moran gets the snap. Looking to throw. Had him. Second guessed himself. And Moran gets the completion after looking and turning all around. And, and six yard reception right there to Neil Acker. He had Neil at first, and he didn't. And I guess he didn't like it. And then you know it was a scramble drill for him. And eventually, uh, he eventually found Neil Acker on the reception right there. Nice yeah, that, you know, that makes Dylan Moran, Dylan Moran, you know, uh, putting in all the hard work and the long hours on on those type of situations. In comes Ty Dito at the receiver position. Moran in the shotgun, Galong to his right, hands it off to Galong on the right side. Big hole, and Galong brings it down to about the thirty-six. First down yardage. 36-yard line. Ball just shy of the 35-yard line. 37-yard line. First and 10. Hand Looks off. like there's going to be a heat timeout. And, and we'll be right back after these messages. When your roommate borrows your car every day, it might be a blind spot. And if something bad happens to your expensive collection or anything, it could be a blind spot. Even having people over to jump around on your trampoline. Yep, it also might be a blind spot. Blind spots are all the surprising things that might need more coverage that you weren't aware of. Good thing all state agents can help you find these blind spots while watching out for your wallet. Agent Jason Pagan has offices in Pablo Golan The river is rising. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pagan agency a call today. 601-798-7005. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. All right. Welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here at the Nest. Brett Farfield. Kill Mississippi. On WRJW 1320 AM, 106.9 FM, and beautiful night for some football here in Hancock County. We just, uh, before commercial break, Zach Galong with a seven-yard carry and a Hawks first down in the Hawks offense. Moving the ball again with five minutes, 55 seconds left. Tied up seven to seven. It's crucial the Hawks get in the end zone right here, Dre. Moran in the shotgun. Man in motion right to left. That's Hopgood. Moran rolling left. Has a man looking to throw, and don't know what uh, Dylan saw on that play. Uh, I saw a man open, and he tried to go deep, and it was like triple coverage out there. Um, almost tipped into the hands of Neil Acker, but uh, pass goes incomplete. Going to be a second and ten situation here for the Hawks. So Moran in the shotgun, running back to his right, receiver to the right, receiver to the left. Moran gets the snap, looking to throw, throws the fade route to Acker. Could have been pass interference right there, in my opinion, but goes incomplete. Going to bring up third and ten for the Hawks. It's a, this is a very big third and ten right here. Crucial. Because you uh you want to you know you want to get points on the board as the Eagles they do get the ball to start the second half so you got to put some pressure on them here. Absolutely, Moran in the shotgun, quick pitch to Galong on the right side. Got two blockers out in front. Galong puts his head down. He's keep he's running and he gets it. And I think he gets enough for the first down right there, Dre. No, oh, he got more than enough. Yeah, he got 12 yards and the Hawks first down. So another first and ten situation for the Hawks. Moran in the shotgun. And looks like it might be a timeout Eagles. And we'll be right back after these messages. Craving a breakfast toaster or French toast sticks? Make it a meal and step up your breakfast with Todd's and a cold beverage. Sonic Drive-In has the perfect portable breakfast, and it's the perfect way to start your day. And at Sonic Drive-In in Picayune, you can stop by any time because breakfast is served all day. Sonic Drive-In in Picayune on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North. Start your day Sonic style with happy eating at its best. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In of Picayune. Destination delicious. 
Welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here on WRJW 1320 AM 106.9 FM. Where your Hawks are tied with the Florence Eagles 7-7 and on the move. Hawks first and 10. Right around the 25-yard line. Ball spotted. It's right on the 25, actually. Moran in the shotgun. Galong to his right. A receiver to the right, one to the left. Hand off to Galong on the left side. and makes a stop and cuts it back across the grain. Put on the brakes right there, Dre, and just went, went back side. Yeah, that was a very, you know, that was a Zach Galong showing off how elusive and uh, his great vision that he has right there. The, the, the agility, right, yeah. as well. Like, just stop on a dime like that and change direction. Not many people can do that. Second and two, eight-yard carry for Galong. Uh, Galong, hand off up the middle, hole. And Galong picks up a first down. Galong, first down yardage. Six yards for Zachary Galong on the play. Inside and Hawks go with the hurry up line. offense. More in the shotgun. Galong to his left. Receiver to the left. Look for a slant over here. Maybe a little quick post. No, hand off the Galong up the middle. Ty Dito was one on one. And there's a little bit of a mismatch, it looks like, as well. Dito versus the DB. A little bit of a height differential. And that was a two yard, two yard carry by Galong right there. Going to bring up second and eight for the Hawks. Galong. Looking a little, a little more effective this week than he did last week versus Vancouver. Moran in the shotgun. Fakes the handoff. Fade route to Ty Dito. And in and out of the hands. Of Ty Dito. Moran took a shot. That'll bring up a third down now. Probably could have used a little bit more air on that ball. Um, Maybe led Dito more to the back of the corner of the end zone. Yeah, backside. Um, I like the I like the shot though. I like taking the shot right there. That was a good uh, play call. Uh, you know, like I said, one on one coverage out there. Now they said, all right, we're going to bring Neil Acker out there, see if he can cover the six foot five receiver. Moran in the shotgun and hands it off and dropped by Galong, but he picks it back up off the turf. And Zach Galong is going to get it to the end zone, folks. Little bit of uh, luck on that play. It was supposed to be a double reverse. Uh, Galong to Hopgood. Galong dropped it. It literally bounced right off the turf back into his hands. And Galong carries it into the end zone for a Hawks touchdown. Nice run by Zachary Galong for the touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run for Zach Galong. And here we go again with the kicking woes on the extra points. It seems like it's starting to catch back up after the missed field goal. Oh, the, the, the block field goal, and Powell's extra point gets blocked, and your Hawks lead 13-7 to here at home on homecoming night with four minutes left in the half versus the Florence Eagles. Just when you thought, you know, that the Hawks, they had the kicking problems figured out, it looks like they're coming back. You got to you gotta figure out what's going on and it's not why good. they're getting blocked. It's not good, Dre. You have to make these uh, extra points. And I'm rewatching the YouTube, and again, it's just like right up the middle on the right side. Same same thing with the field goal attempt. The field goal, goal attempt, snap was good, the hold was good, but I mean, you can't make it if you got a dude right in your face. You know, we got to get the uh, offensive line figured out right there on the extra points. Yeah, maybe. Is uh, it not the same when you play? Was it not the same starting offensive line? That's on the for field? The, for the most part, yes. It, we need to pay attention to see uh, who comes off and who goes on, uh, if, if there's any difference. Because these guys are blocking on the runs for uh, Galong and, and the pass plays for Moran. So Powell puts a foot into it, going to be caught around the eight-yard line. And the tackle is going to be made okay, by uh, the line. Justice Meeker and Julian Santee. So, looks like uh, the Eagles are going to start. First and ten, not great field position, but decent. First and ten at the 30. I 
I formation. Reed on the center. Hand off around the right side. And great play right there. Jeffrey Hopgood in the backfield. Don't, looks like he got maybe a half a yard on the play. So it's going to be bringing up second down in about nine, nine and a half. Still waiting to hear from Aiden Taylor tonight. Only has one tackle. Need some of that backside pursuit, Dre. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's got to, you know, find a way to come up in a big way for this defense on the backside. So Reed on the center. Hand it off. And to Taylor's side, and Taylor goes inside oh, instead of holding there. outside contain. Oh, and they gain the edge and pick up some big yards right there for an Eagles first down. To the thirty, uh, to the forty-five yard line. So about a fifteen-yard carry right there on the play. You want to see uh, Taylor as the outside linebacker slash defensive end, I guess, on this defensive line. You know, you want to hit him hard with your left hand and keep outside contained. If anything, you can grab him with your right arm. Hand off around the right side. That's the quick again. Quick, once again, on the it's going to be about a two, three yard carry. And looks like he was tackled on the, play. on the play by Devin Biddle and Julian Santee. So the Eagles Santee are definitely trying to get one on the board with two minutes and 25 seconds left in the half. Because they get the ball at the half. So the Hawks, the, the Hawks defense has to be up to the challenge, Drake. Yeah, they got to uh, find a way to come up with a big stop here. Second and about seven. Handoff. Right on the right side. And he he's he just chugging along. Right That's going to be a tackle. Flag comes in late. That's a tackle by Jeffrey Hopgood. I don't know what the penalty was. Hit ball. Personal foul, Personal foul on the foul. Hawks. I don't know if the Eagles have had a penalty tonight, Gray. Right? I don't think they have. All the penalties so far have been on the Hawks. Personal foul on Dante Taylor. After the play, you got to keep your you got to keep uh, your composure. You can't give the other team 15 yards because you're getting blocked on the outside or whatnot, and. Uh, you retaliate or something. Yeah. I mean, the ball didn't even go your way. You 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 commit a penalty on the back side of the play. That's that's just help your team, don't hurt your team. You know what I mean, Dre? Yeah, especially when the Eagles are driving and they get the ball to start the second half too. High formation, read on the center, hand off around the right side again. The quick, quick, going to be dragged out of bounds after about a one-two yard play. Yeah, I just rewinded the play, and there was no no uh, need for what Dante Taylor did on that play. Slapped the kid in his uh, like across his face because he was getting blocked. Quarterback rolls out, looking to throw. He has the tight end, but he got pressure, and that's Aiden Taylor. Aiden Taylor with the initial hit and then comes in. Jackson Knight. Yeah, so I uh, give him half a sack, I guess, each. I don't, I don't know how you score that one, Dre. You, you the score keeper on defense. You score it how you want, buddy. But that's that's what we needed right there. Big, huge uh, defensive stop by uh, the Hawks defense. Not necessarily a stop, but a big play. You know what I mean? There's a, a sack. That was a big defensive play there by Hank uh, Aiden Taylor coming through. See if we can see it on the replay. Uh, well, I think they got this timeout. And we'll be right back after these messages. High school football season is back and the excitement is real. But with the thrill of the game come those unexpected aches and pains. More Chiropractic Clinic has got your back. Trusted by athletes and families alike, we ensure you're in top form to cheer for your favorite teams. So don't let pain sideline you this season. Whether it's a slip in the stands or a tackle on the field, More Chiropractic is here for all your spinal care needs. 
So get back in the game with more chiropractic clinic. Your team's winning touchdown starts with a healthy spine. Call us today or visit us at our clinic. More chiropractic clinic. Wellness meets winning spirit. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. And the sack and D was by Jackson Knight. Although the initial uh, hit was by Aiden Taylor. They try, uh, they try to run a middle screen right here. And Caleb Schaefer in the backfield for the tackle for loss. First time seeing Schaefer on defense this year, I think. Yeah, I believe he uh, he came in for Dante Taylor after he got taken off the field after his unnecessary penalty. So we got Schaefer playing both ways. Nice. And, I mean, when you got a kid with speed like that, you got to find him. You got to find a way. To, a, yeah, yeah, you got to find a place for him anywhere you can. So is he the one that made the tackle? Yes. We, give that man some credit for a tackle for a loss, right? And you see, you go to your handy dandy notebook. <laughs> so going to be a very long fourth down situation with uh, 45 seconds left on the clock. And I just realized they called another timeout. Can't go to commercial now because they'll be back before. Uh, See what happens right here. See if Christoph Gagne, Mr. Locksmith, can get him another one. Actually, what looks like the no, actually looks like the Eagles are going to be punting. And see if Morin and the Hawks can get anything on the last 45 seconds. Not that great of a punt. But it does get a bounce and goes or is down at around the well, 20. Well, Rose did have about the 23 yard line of Hancock, where they'll take over the 30 seconds. About the 23, 24 30 yard line. Back. See what the Hawks elect to do with uh, 36 seconds left on the clock before the half. Going to be very interesting to see what they do since the Eagles do get the ball to start the second half. Do they try to, you know, punch in six or do they just – take the calm approach and get it in the half. Yeah, just kneel it down and, and, and continue to play some good defense. Remember, folks, we got the Dixie Lane home, home and Garden Center halftime show coming up. Moran, quick pitch to Galong. Galong hits the outside. Still running. Makes a man miss. Makes two men miss. Flag yeah. comes out of And they're calling a block below the legs on the Eagles. That may be their first penalty. So give Galong. Six yards on the carry. And add on another 15, I believe. So this is... This is definitely manageable right here for Moran and the Hawks offense, right? Uh, getting the ball up almost near midfield. Yeah, after that penalty, I'd say, you know, you got to try to do something here to get in the end zone. So it looks like you got man-to-man -man on the uh, outside over here. Moran, oh for his last three pass attempts. In the shotgun, looking to throw the quick bubble screen. Complete the Acker. Acker gets a block and then gets tackled Moran after about three yards. And, and the Hawks are going to take a timeout. And we'll be right back after these messages. Pearl River Community College has been providing a quality education to the people of South Mississippi and beyond for the past 110 years. If you or a family member is an alumnus of this great institution, we invite you to support future PRCC students through the PRCC Foundation Scholarship Program. Honor or memorialize a loved one or identify your support for the college by creating a scholarship through the PRCC Foundation with your tax-deductible financial gift. Call Delana Harris with the PRCC Foundation Office at 601 403-1191 and make a financial investment in a young person's future at Pearl River Community College. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here on WRJW 106.9, 1320 AM with 20 seconds left on the clock. Uh, how huge it would be, Dre, if we can get this ball in the end zone. Or in the shotgun. 
Three receivers to the right. Moran. Pump fakes. Looking to go to Schaefer, but now throws it to the outside and does the smart thing and throws it out of bounds. Goes incomplete. Ten seconds left on the clock. The Eagles did not fall for the, uh, the pump and go, the Schaefer. They tried to do the little uh, fake bubble screen to Acker and send Schaefer up the field, and uh, they didn't fall for it. Looks like there's an official timeout. We'll be right back after these messages. First Southern Bank believes that banking should be personal and convenient, and that's exactly the type of service you will receive at First Southern Bank. Open your account at First Southern Bank at 1321 Highway 43 North in Picayune, and you can experience a true hometown banking experience. First Southern Bank is personal enough to handle all your banking needs and big enough to handle all your mortgage needs. Convenient locations, personal friendly service, and mortgage experts. That's First Southern Bank, true hometown banking at its best. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. I'm Jay Underwood. On WRJW 106.9 FM, 1320 AM. Hawks trying to try to do something before they have 10 seconds. Moran in the shotgun, looking to throw. And has some pressure. And Moran going to be sacked for the first time tonight. And Looks like that might take us to the half. I don't know. Looks like the Hawks called one last time out with two seconds left on the clock, Dre. Avery Elmer, don't be stopped. See if the so Morgan was sacked for a one yard loss, and it does look like it's going to be a timeout. We're going to take another uh, another break right here. Let's play some, play some of the bills, Dre. Tackle your pain with Dodd Therapy Center. Jamison Dodd, a former Maroon Tiesman, and his team of therapists provide one-on-one -on -one specialized care to help you and your athlete get back in the game. Dodd Therapy Center offers specialized post-operative care, manual spine techniques, trigger point dry needling, and spinal decompression traction for neck and back pain. Jamison is also specialized in treating Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Give Dot Therapy Center a call at 769-242-2636 or visit us at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Bringing the game live here on WRJW, 1320 AM, 106.9 FM, where the Hawks look like they're trying to score with two seconds left on the clock, and uh, the Florence Eagles are just dropping everybody back deep. That's probably the smart thing to do right here. Yeah, you got uh, almost 60 yards to go, and Moran just runs out of bounds. I don't know what the, the play was. Hancock takes the lead into the locker room. 13 to 7. Hawks go in the locker room up 13 to 7 over the Florence Eagles here on homecoming night at the Nest. And Dre, what do you expect? You got a, a 5 and 0 Hancock team and you got a almost a, 5 and 0 Florence Eagles team. 3 points away from being 5 and 0 like we mentioned in the in the pregame show. Uh, you know, they lost a game, one game by 2 and one game by 1 and one of those games were a, was a double overtime game. And uh they're going at it, man. It, it truly is a this is a good test for the Hawks uh, to go into uh, district play next week versus the West Harrison Hurricanes. And this truly is, like we said, a, a battle at the nest where you got the Hawks versus the Eagles. Um, we got the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center halftime show coming up next. Remember, folks, uh, if you need to visit uh, Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center, you can go by and see them at 21330 Highway 603 in the kill, or you can call them at 228 255-4790 Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center We'll be right back after these messages
Check out this new 2023 Rockwood Signature 8288 SB fifth wheel with rear living floor plan and opposite slide outs. This fifth wheel has a king bed, kitchen island, and only weighs 10,600 pounds. MSRP 93,886, reduced to only 58,987. Paul Paul's Campers, make that short drive to Picayune. You'll be glad you did. See multiple pictures of this unit at rvbestprice.com. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please direct your Abby attention Turner, to the field for a special presentation Highland from Superintendent Red Family rooms are important because they help us do early detection. A mammogram is never going to keep you from getting breast cancer, but early detection is what is going to make you have your best possible outcome. We want you to get your mammogram as early as possible, and you should have those yearly beginning at age 40. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to the loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve its local community with two locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. We know they'll treat you right. Remember, when it comes to your vehicle shine, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. Now hiring at the Highway 43 location. When it comes to protecting what you love, you want an insurance agent that... Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Stouty and Family, what you need. And that's exactly what you'll get with the Kingdom of Agent Jason Michael. We stand here today in this field not only to celebrate the spirit of just know but also to honor an outstanding chief of our education. We're thrilled to announce that the Kingdom of Agent Michael has achieved an incredible feat. Currently, Agent Michael is the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to the strength of the Kingdom of Agent Michael. This is a testament to
the uh, extra point and field goal situation. On uh, we've been saying it all season so far, Dre. Uh, that's four points that could uh, possibly be on the board, and the Hawks could be up seventeen to seven, two, a two-score game. Yeah, you uh, you never you never want to see your offense leave points on the board at any point because you know. There could be the difference maker in the end of the game for the Hawks. Well, absolutely. When we're talking about a team that's only that has two losses on the season, one by two points and one by one point. Or, you know, again, this team could be right up here, and this could have been a, a perennial matchup for the, the state of Mississippi tonight if if the Florence so Eagles wins both of the game, both of those games, and you got two teams five and zero going at it tonight. So uh, when we come back from the Dixieland uh, Home Farm and Garden Center. Uh, Commercial, Dre will give you uh, the rundown on some of the defensive stats. Again, uh, if you need anything from Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center, go by and see them at 21330 Highway 603 in the Kill, or you can call them at 228-255-4790. Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center. We'll be right back after these messages. This hunting season, hurry to Dixieland Home Farm and Garden for the gear to get you closer. All outdoors to know that success begins with preparation, knowing what to plant and when to plant. And Dixieland offers soil testing, plot mixes, and fertilizer. And they have a large variety of sporting goods, ammunition and targets, summit and millennium stands, scent control and ground blinds, and now hunting and fishing licenses. For great deals and friendly service, it's Dixieland Home Farm and Garden, Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dito Road. Open every day, 8 till 6. Find us on Facebook. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. I'm Jay Underwood, and you're listening to the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center halftime show. Uh, we got the, you know, I got to give a shout out. I know we, we uh, I said defense, Dre, but you know, I got to give a shout out to my daughter Gracie Nunez out there performing right now for the halftime show for the uh, Hawks Talons dance team, and they just put on a show, Jay. Glad we got to watch it while the commercial was playing because. They, they just put on a show, and they're looking good out there. Great job, Gracie and the girls, for the Hancock Talons dance team. Uh, you know one of the other ones, uh, your, your buddy's um, sister, uh, Lizzie. Lizzie. Yeah, good job out there, Lizzie. I, I wish I had a list of all the girls' names, but uh, Lizzie, one of uh, Gracie's uh, good friends on the dance team. and uh, Great job by the Hawks Talons dance team. And, uh now it looks like the, the pride of Hancock, the Hancock High Marching Band, is headed to the field. And while they get set up and uh, we let the, the fans listen to the, the band play, Dre, just run down some uh, deep stats real quick for us. Uh, yeah, you have Jeffrey Hopgood, who has seven tackles, two for a loss. Julian Santee with seven tackles, also with one for a loss. Casey Wheat with one tackle. You have Aiden Taylor with one tackle. And a half a sack. Bryce Ladner has one tackle. Then you have Christoph Gagne, who came up on a big third and long play and got an interception for the Hawks. He has zero tackles, though, so far. Tyran Ramsey with two tackles. Jackson Knight has a tackle, and he has the other half of the Aiden Taylor sack. Devin Biddle with one tackle. Leonard Kemper with two tackles. Justice Megger with one tackle. And you have Caleb Schaefer with one tackle for a loss. And that was a, that was a big tackle. Uh, came up and made a tackle for a loss right there, uh, taking the place of Dante Taylor after Taylor. And I kind of seen Lawler. You, you know, Lawler, he's kind of a cool, calm, and collective coach. He doesn't really, you know, you don't really see him yelling at the players too much. And you see them just, like, talking to Dante after that. He's like, you can just read the, the emotion. And, you know, it wasn't really yelling, but he was saying, like, Hey, you can't do that hey, right there. Like, come on, kid. You, you know, they're running the ball. They, they're getting some yards. You can't give them yards. Um you can't help them out. And, and, you know, I say that a lot in, in uh, even in all sports, right? You can't, you can't commit the foul or the penalty or, or anything like that and help the other team out because that's what helps them create momentum. That's what helps gives them, gives them the momentum to continue to do what they do. But good thing for the Hawks, they uh, stopped them and uh, got the ball back and was trying to do something a little bit right there before the half. And, wasn't quite able to, uh, to do it. Um, when we come back uh, from the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center Halftime Show, Dre's going to take us around the and, uh, Actually, we, before we go to the commercial, let's listen to the Hancock Marching Band, the part of Hancock real quick. 
Rock High School Marching Band. The Brian Hancock is under the direction of Michael Gilmore, Lynn Jenkins, Courtney Wells, and Leanne Gallagher. The Brian Hancock's 2023 competitive performance is entitled Beetlejuice. Tonight's performance includes solos by Keely Freeman, Hayden Lightheart, Bo Malley, Sarah Marlin, and Jeremiah Noller, and will also feature the trombone and trumpet sections. Drum Major Logan Sullivan, is your band ready? That's a little sample size of the Hancock High Marching Band, the pride of Hancock, performing a little Beetlejuice during uh, Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center halftime show. Remember, folks, if you uh, need anything from Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center, go by and see them at 21330 Highway 603 in the kill or call 228-255-4790. And we'll be right back after a commercial from Dixieland. begins with preparation, and the place to get prepared is Dixieland Home Farm and Garden in the world. The Dixieland is where Dixieland can help you. Here are the soil testers, cotton mix, ammunition, targets, set control, and much more. Hunting and fishing licenses are available. Dixieland Home Farm and Garden on Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dido Road. It's open daily, 8 a.m. to 6 a.m. Center. Proud supporter of the Hancock Hawks. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. And you're listening to the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center Halftime Show. Dre, take us around the league. Yeah, um, you have George County there currently leading Hattiesburg 7-6. You have Long Beach leading South Jones 28-21. And then some other scores from around the coast. Harrison Central is leading Meridian 13 to 9, and you have Diabraville up on Wayne County 28 to 15. So interesting. The teams out on the coast seem to be handling some business right now at the half, or maybe they may they may be in the third quarter of some of the action. But there we go, Dre. Uh, Long Beach may get there. I'm not gonna say it, Dre. Dre, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> not this week. <laughs> I don't want to. Let, I don't want them to let us down, Dre. Uh, you know they're leading right now. They've been leading at the half a few times, and uh, we'll just check on it towards the end of the game, Dre. But uh, that one right there, George County seven, Harrison. Uh, I mean Hattiesburg six. Um, so we'll see, I, or I'll see. You know I'm a part of some Mississippi high school football uh, fans page. Um, on Facebook, and we'll see what uh, what's said about that game when I go check it out uh, later tonight. So again, folks, you're listening to the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center halftime show. Um, if you need anything from Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center, go and see them at two one three three zero Highway six zero three in the Kill, or you can call them at two two eight 
255-4790. Friendly staff. They got pretty much everything and anything you need for uh, any home, farm, and garden center uh, needs. Uh, like they said in the commercial, you can get your fishing license, hunting license there. And go check them out. Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center. We'll be right back after these messages. This hunting season, hurry to Dixieland Home Farm and Garden for the gear to get you closer. All outdoorsmen know that success begins with preparation, knowing what to plant and when to plant. And Dixieland offers soil testing, plot mixes, and fertilizer. And they have a large variety of sporting goods, ammunition and targets, summit and millennium stands, scent control and ground blinds, and now hunting and fishing licenses. For great deals and friendly service, it's Dixieland Home Farm and Garden. Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dito Road. Open every day, 8 till 6. Find us on Facebook. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. I'm Jay Underwood. And you're listening to us live on the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center Halftime Show on WRJW 1320 AM, 106.9 FM. And you can uh, go to the Hancock County School District YouTube page. The game is... Uh, being broadcast on the, the YouTube page, and uh, the radio is uh, linked up to the to the YouTube. So it's like if you couldn't make it to the, this homecoming event, and you're at home, or maybe you're at work, or whatever, it's like you're uh, watching a regular football game, like on a Saturday or Sunday. You know, you got you got me and uh, Dre uh, giving you the play-by-play and the color uh, analyst. Um, and go check us out. Leave some. Uh, Leave some comments. Give us uh, some feedback. Uh, you can text us uh, via Facebook Messenger or on Twitter. Hawks WRJW Radio. Dre, drop your, uh, your X. The X handle. It's uh, Dre underscore Jizzle 9. There you go. Dre underscore Drizzle 9. And again, Hawks WRJW Radio. And... Uh, I want to give a big shout out to uh, one of my former coaches. He uh, always listens in every now and again, and and uh, that's Coach Little G, Mike Godan. And yeah, I agree with you, Coach G. Not one of their best halves uh, as of right now, but uh, we do have the uh, the lead, thirteen to seven. Just got to figure out, uh, you know, you can't go into district play, and you know, I say it every year that I've been doing this. Uh, you, you want to get the penalties, like the, 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 the little, what I call like, you know, like stupid penalties out of the way, the ones you don't want to commit, because those could really hurt you in district games. Um, you want to get those out of the way in these non-district games, and we've had some penalties tonight. So, yeah, I agree with you, uh, Little G. Yeesh, not one of their best halves. We've got to figure out the kicking game, Dre. I mean, it's, it's inevitable. If uh, teams can expose us that way, when we score, I mean, we, we're laying, we're leaving points on the on the uh, on the turf. Yeah, you know, uh, it looked like last week, and then to start the game off here tonight, it looked like the kicking woes would take the hair out. But then um, you've had, you know, Sam Powell's had a field goal block, a field goal attempt to block, and then his second extra point was also blocked. So. Mi- Maybe the Hawks, you know, uh, look over the film from those plays and see what went wrong and hope they can fix it. And, that, and that's just the thing, Dre. Like, Powell has a strong leg. Like, we need to take advantage of his strong leg if, if need be. If we need him to come through for a game-winning field goal or something towards the end of the uh, a game one uh, weekend, I mean, one Friday night, um, we have to be able to rely on him to uh, make that. It's not Powell, though. It's not Powell missing the kicks. It's the offensive line or the, the, the field goal team or extra point team line uh, giving up the inside or, or some kind of leverage somewhere along that line to where these kicks are getting blocked. Um, it's, it's not power. It's not a power issue. It's a We need to figure out the offensive line issue on the extra point uh, situation. So uh, that's the end of the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center Halftime Show. Uh, again, one last time, if you need uh, anything from Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center, go by and see them at 21330 Highway 603 in the Kill, or you can call them at 228-255-4790, Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center. And your Hawks lead 13-7 to 
Well, I heard the horn, Dre. Did they throw a couple minutes? They added extra three minutes back on the clock to let the players get back on the field. Well, I'll tell you up. what. I'm going to give uh, Dixieland one more. One more play of the old commercial right now. Here we go. Seasoned outdoorsmen know the key to successful hunting begins with preparation. And the place to get prepared is Dixieland Home Farm and Garden in the kill. Knowing what to plant and when to plant is where Dixieland can help you. They offer soil testing, plot mix, fertilizer, sporting goods, ammunition, targets, scent control, and much more. Hunting and fishing licenses are available. Dixieland Home Farm and Garden on Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dido Road, is open daily 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Follow us on Facebook. Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center, proud supporter of the Hancock Hawks. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. I'm Jay Underwood. Bringing you this game live on WRJW 1320 AM, 106.9 FM. And still got about a minute and uh, roughly about a minute and 35 seconds, I'd say, uh, left in this halftime as the players warm up. Dre, what are your uh, what are your keys to success for the second half for the Hawks? Uh, I think that, you know, offensively, even though that it's not the best half so far, they've had some bright spots. You've had Zach DeLong in the running game, and then you had Dylan Moran, who's uh, – even though he doesn't have a touchdown, he's still making some big throws. So I'd say you have to keep on the attack in the running game and uh, maybe see Morian get going a little bit more here in the second half. I agree uh, there, Dre. Uh, the, there are some good passing uh, opportunities there for Morian in this Hawks offense. Uh, there was a stretch there where he went uh, – Four for five, and that was where he accumulated most of his yards with uh, two 15-yarders to Neil Acker, a 14 – well, what kicked it off was the 14-yarder to Ty Dito, then two 15-yarders to Neil Acker, had an incompletion, and then had another 11-yarder to uh, Neil Acker. And, and, and at that point, um, then he threw a six-yard pass to Neil Acker right after uh, that on his next pass attempt. So up until that point, he was looking pretty good on the night, and then – uh, to close out the half, he just went uh, one for five. It looks like to close out the half. So looked like he was on a, on fire there for a second, and looked like it was going to be a big night. And it still could be a big night. There are opportunities. Uh, that one to Dito in the uh, end zone was a little bit uh, I hate to say flat, but it was a little flat. If he if he puts a little bit more air and uses the the back corner, either the back corner or that front pylon, but use. Basically, the left side of that uh, end zone, instead of throwing it on a straight line, and uh, you know Dito, the way Dito's body was positioned, it could have very easily been an easy uh, touchdown pass for Moran. But nonetheless, the Hawks uh, still lead going uh, start to, to start the second half off, 13 to seven, and see if this defense can come out and uh, stay stay in tune. Powell uh, puts the the T on the I mean the ball on the T. Normally, you know, most of the Hawks games they've started off on defense, so the you know the defense has set the tone in the first half quickly. But uh, right here, we're going to need them to set the tone to start the second half off for the Hawks. Absolutely, Dre. So uh, let's see what we get going on here. So. All right, here we go. Hancock receiving the second half kickoff. The third ball, Case and Harris doing the kicking for the Eagles. Correction. So here we go. Powell. And he puts a foot into it. He's going to be caught right at the 20. And that's uh, Cortland Battle going all the way across the field. field and he picks up about eight on the return. Maybe nine. See where they spotted that. Nine-yard return right there by Cortland Battle. He's going to bring up first and ten at the 29-yard line. So here we go. We got uh, Luke Reed. Going under center, eye formation. Hands it off around the right side. And maybe uh, a yard. Yeah, he falls forward for a yard right there. Uh, 
Xavier and Quick. Gonna bring up second and nine, second and uh, maybe eight and a half. Look like they moved it up just a little bit more. Inside the yard or so on the play, second down. And it looks like Jackson Knight's trying to get off the field. It looks like he's hobbling. And then comes uh, Gabe Fricky. Reed hands it off around the left side. And nice. the man that comes in, I think, just made the tackle. Uh, Bryce Seidner there on the tackle, the big man in the middle. Down by number 44. Uh, great uh, player oh, on the defensive line right there by Bryce Ladner. Hey, Gonna bring up a third and long situa situation right here for the Eagles. I think they converted one oh, third and long, and that's when the uh, quarterback rolled left and then uh, had uh, plenty of space on the green and found his uh, lineman and just used him as a shield. So Reed drops back in the shotgun with a running back to his left, two receivers to the left. Man in motion right to left. He rolls left. He's looking to throw, and it's going to be complete right in the – Right in front of the outstretched arms of Casey Wheat. And he's going to get into Hawks territory. And Reed flings it out there with a pretty good arm. Again, you can't give up plays like that, but – Balls on the you know, you want to put him in those type of situations. And the didn't really see any pressure by the Hawks defense, right? No, it looked like, you know, Reed had uh, plenty of time to throw, and he found his receiver there for the first down. So they said, let's go back into the shotgun. We just completed a 16-yard pass or so, a little bit more maybe. And Second penalty for the Eagles. Eagles. False start, going to back him up five. So, after getting it across the 50 into the Hawks territory, they go five yards back and are now at the – Their own 48-yard line. The Eagles 48. Eagles moving right to left on your radio dial. So, Reed and the Eagles stay in the shotgun formation. This is where you need to see the uh, Aiden Taylor – Get past that left tackle. Put a move on him and get to the quarterback. Man in motion left to right. Reed calls his own number. Runs and spins. And picks up four of those five yards back. Brought down by number 71. A hand shot. I'm going to bring up second and about. Uh, actually, he got three of those yards back. Going to bring up second and 12 for the uh, Eagles. Second down and about The only tackle for the Hawks was uh, Leonard Kemper. So Reed and the Eagles come back out in the shotgun. Gets the snap, hands it off to Quick. Quick finds a little bit of a hole. Quick on the carry, working his way downfield. Quick the picks up about six. Going to bring up third and manageable for the Eagles in Hawks territory. You know, the Eagles are thinking like the same, you know, hey, we got a score right here. We got a score right here. Uh, down by six. They want to make the most of their first possession in the second half. Clock's running at eight minutes, 18 seconds left in the third quarter. And they come back in their base offense, the wing T. Look for a jet sweep or something right here. And right, once again. Timeout by the Eagles. Looks like, yep, looks like a timeout, and we'll be right back after these messages. Craving a breakfast toaster or French toast sticks? Make it a meal and step up your breakfast with Todd's in a cold beverage. Sonic Drive-In has the perfect portable breakfast, and it's the perfect way to start your day. And at Sonic Drive-In in Picayune, you if can stop by any time because breakfast is served all day. Sonic Drive-In in Picayune on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North. Start your day Sonic style with happy eating at its best. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In in Picayune. Destination delicious. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing the game live on WRJW 106.9, 1320 AM. 
Yeah, Makes you wonder, did they have some kind of trick play drawn up and they said they didn't like the look? But here we go, wing T formation, man in motion left to right, handed off to that man, trying to gain the outside. And the Hawks defense stands tall, but you got to imagine this is uh, probably – territory. Yeah, exactly. You took the words right out of my mouth, Dre. This, you got to imagine this is uh, probably fourth down territory right here for the Eagles. He's going to bring up a fourth and about three yards. Fourth and we'll call it three yards. And I don't know, Dre. Uh, they bring out the punt unit. You might want to watch out for the fake punt right here. Looks like the Hawks. And are that's ready exactly for it. what they do. And the Hawks look like they were ready for it. But fake the punt. Eagles the get enough carry. of a push. The right and just the first down. that's exactly what they did, what I called, Dre. Fake punt. Direct snap to the up back. Where the Eagles are getting a new set of downs. We'll bring them a first and ten new set of downs for the Eagles. Ball spotted at the 35-yard line of Hancock. Eagles moving right to left on your radio dial. Eagles come out in the I formation. Quick, the tailback. Going to do a wingback trap. And that's going to be Julian Santini on the tackle after a one-yard carry. He wasn't fooled. Number 41, no, him, him, and, him and Hopgood are uh, very smart linebackers there in the middle of the defense for the Hawks. And also at the bottom of that Aiden pile North, was uh, Aiden, Aiden Taylor. Looked like Aiden hit him, Aiden hit him low. And uh, Santee hit him a high and combined on the tag. I just, I know I saw Santee's number clearly. I saw Aiden coming out from the bottom. So they drop back into the shotgun formation. Luke Reed keeps it himself, puts his head down, Reed on a picks up a pretty good uh, bit of yardage and bring up a third and short situation for the Eagles. Now it's Santee again on the tackle for the Hawks. Bring up a third down. Looks like it's going to be third, third and four for the Eagles right here. And Officials that's going to be the heat timeout. So we'll be right back after, mess after messages. When you wake up with an aching back or sore neck, Dr. Debbie Moore with Moore Chiropractic Clinic suggests you consider making simple changes in your sleeping position to alleviate unnecessary strain on your body. According to the American Chiropractic Association and Dr. Debbie Moore, it's best to sleep on your back or side because laying on your back or side allows your head, neck, and spine to relax into their natural alignment. This will help you wake up pain-free and feeling rejuvenated. Moore Chiropractic Clinic, we've got your back. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing the game live here on WRJW 106.9, 1320 a.m., and uh, Miss Bonnie Mae, if you can hear me, I did turn up the, the master volume up a little bit. So if those commercials, just keep in touch with me on the text. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the phone. Miss Bonnie Mae, uh, let me know how those commercials sound, if they, if they sound any louder going forward. Here we go, Reed trying to keep the quarterback, uh, the QB draw. And Gabe Fricky spotted it out pretty quick and made the tackle for the so Hawks. Gonna bring up a fourth and short, and, and out of the timeout, they oh, got about a yard on the carry. Uh, so, Eagles coming. Wing T formation. And Reed tries to call his own number, and there's a big hole up the middle for the quarterback who brings it inside the five, maybe right at the five. And there was no tush push on that. It was just a just right up the middle of the Hawks defense on a QB sneak. Nobody, nobody, nobody like crashed the inside of the gap or anything. No, I mean you, that's that's the one play you got to expect, right? A, a QB sneak or a fullback trap or. Something like that out of that uh, type of formation. And, I mean, he went untouched, Andre. Yeah, all the way until, you know, he got tackled at the five-yard line. So the Eagles starting to score and starting to take the lead here on homecoming night. Reed, power pitch to the right side to quick. 
Quick does a spin quick. He's dropped at about the three. Looks like it's going to get spotted around the three and a half yard line. Looks like the ball is spotted at the three yard line. It's going to be crucial right here for the Hawks defense to get a stop right here, Dre. Create a turnover, maybe. Somebody has to come up and make a play. Reed, under center, hand off to Quick. Quick is going to get stopped. Well, the carry. They say he got into the and, touchdown. And uh, Jones oh on the wide side said goal. touchdown. So the Eagles, for the time being right now, have it tied up with the Hawks here in, Han uh, in Brett Favre Field. And you couldn't ask for more for if you're an Eagles fan. Uh, out of that drive, you uh, three minutes fifty six seconds in the third quarter, ate up most of the the quarter on that one drive, and uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Hi, Wildcats! I'm Carrie, e. and I'm McKenzie. Are you ready to roll with the best here at Pearl River? We're inviting you to join our growing Wildcat family. Pearl River continues to make headlines as the fastest growing We're community college in the state, all while putting our students first by not increasing tuition and developing more opportunities for successful careers. Come be a part of history by joining our Wildcat family where we show out our main character energy. Just visit prcc.edu and roar, roar with, with the best. All right, hey, welcome back, Hawk fans. Back this is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here on WRJW 106.9 FM, 1320 AM. And if you are uh, not watching via YouTube and you're listening, out of the commercial break, the ball went doink. Off right, the upright. Right off the upright. And uh, this game is tied 13-13 to here at Brett Favre Field in Kill, Mississippi. Home of the Hawks. We're here at the nest, baby. So, and, I mean, maybe these are the type of situations that has this team three and two on the, uh, the year, Dre. You know, you, you say they, they're three points away from being five and zero, oh, and they had a chance to take the lead here on the road, and they're going to sky kick it. Going to be caught by Kyson Kanan. Kanan uh, going to bring it up to around the thirty-seven. 36, 37 yard line. So decent starting field position for uh, Dylan Morian and the Hawks offense. Let's see if we can get uh get some things going here in our first possession of the second half. Yeah, you know you got to look for Morian and the offense to pick up where they uh, left off and find the success that they had in the first half on this drive. And right now, uh, it's pretty much looking like I said uh, it's, it's going to look. It's going to be the Probably the team last with the ball. More in the shotgun, running back to his right. Receiver to the left, one to the right. Hand out to Galong, around the left side. Finds a hole, and Galong brings it up to around the 40. Working his way uphill, crosses the 35. Looks like he's going to pick up about three yards. So three yards on the carry for Zach Galong. Going to bring up second and seven for More in the Hawks. Morin in the shotgun, running back to his right, two receivers to the right. Gets a snap, Morin looking to throw, has a man in the flats. And that's Hopgood, and Hopgood puts on the brakes, makes a change of direction, and gets upfield, brings it to midfield. Actually, they spotted him down there on the 49. A 10-yard reception on the play for Hopgood. After that play, it looked like Dylan Moore, and he was hyped up a little bit. He was what? He was, it looked like he was hyped up a little bit about the play that Hopgood made right there after he pitched it out to him in the flats. So yeah. jumping up and down a little bit, gave a fist pump. And then there was a face mask penalty that was uh, tacked on also. So the Hawks got an extra uh, few yards there and, and now having an eagle. Uh, territory across the 50. Morin in the shotgun. Two receivers to the left. Running back to his right. Morin gets a snap. 
Looking to throw. Screen to Galong. Galong gets behind his blockers. Finds a man. Gets up field. Makes another man. miss. still on his feet. Galong down the sidelines. Galong still on his feet, folks. And Zachary Galong scores on a screen route. What a play by Zachary Galong. I mean, you cannot tackle that kid. He's 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 just too good. I mean, he made move after move, and that was around a 43-yard touchdown pass. Moran to Zachary Galong. Moran's first touchdown of the night. Galong's third, and what a play, Dre. That was awesome. Yeah, uh, Moran, you know, he pitched it out to Galong on the screen, and then Galong had some blockers, and then, uh, like you said, he made some moves, and he was gone. See if this was it right here. It might have been a little bit longer than 43. I think it might have been maybe 47. You're right. And look at that. Man, he runs a dude over. He's still running on the sideline. Another guy comes. He spins off of him and keeps his legs going. And you're right. That was a 47 yard touchdown pass from Moran to Galong on the middle screen. It was a middle screen. Galong got to the outside, and it was all Galong from there on out. If somebody's on the YouTube watching that, somebody needs to screen record that play and send it to me so I can post it on my Twitter later because that was just one heck of a play and effort right there by Zachary Galong. What happened with the extra point? I don't know. Watching the YouTube. Um, to again, right up the middle and blocked. I mean, I don't get it. So your Hawks lead by six again, 19 to 13, with two minutes and 34 seconds left in the third quarter. Powell puts a foot into it, drives it over the head of the re uh, returner into the back of the end zone. So the Eagles, the Florence Eagles, are going to start first and 10 at the 20. They'll bring it up to the 20 where the Eagles are at the first and 10. So the Florence Eagles, who went down and drove on their first possession of the second half, are going to be starting first and 10 at the 20, going right to left on the radio dial, down six here on the road versus the Hancock Hawks. Reed, quarterback draw, keeps, his, keeps it himself. Going to be tackled by Julian Santee. He took a pretty big hit by Julian Santee, but he popped right back up. Ball going to be spotted around the 28-yard line, so an eight-yard carry right there for uh, Luke Reed. So second and eight for the, uh, the Eagles. Reed in the shotgun again, three receivers to the right, running back to his right. Handoff around the left side. And going to be tackled for no gain. Maybe even a tackle for a loss. And on that tackle is Jeffrey Hopgood. Uh, the other person in the vicinity of the tackle was Devin Biddle. So third and very short for this Hawks defense. See if they can get a huge stop right here and get some good uh, field position. Eye formation for the Eagles. Reed under center. Reed hands it off. Right on the right side and big hole. And touchdown, probably touchdown saving tackle right there by Tyron Ramsey. If he, if he breaks that tackle, he's going, Dre. Yeah, because uh, there was nobody on the other side of, on that side of the field to catch him. He would have had nothing but green in front of him. Well, going to be first and ten Eagles. 
ball spotted around the 39-yard line of the Eagles. Reed, again, brings the Eagles offense out into the shotgun formation. He's been successful keeping it himself. Gets the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. Up the middle. Reed brings it to about the 45. Six-yard carry. Going to bring up second and four for the Eagles. 22 on the stop by Hancock. Aiden Taylor. Looks like that's going to be the final play of the third quarter here. We'll be right back after these messages. High school football season is back and the excitement is real. But with the thrill of the game come those unexpected aches and pains. More Chiropractic Clinic has got your back. Trusted by athletes and families alike, we ensure you're in top form to cheer for your favorite teams. So don't let pain sideline you this season. Whether it's a slip in the stands or a tackle on the field, More Chiropractic is here for all your spinal care needs. So get back in the game with More Chiropractic Clinic. Your team's winning touchdown starts with a healthy spine. Call us today or visit us at our clinic, More Chiropractic Clinic, where wellness meets winning spirit. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here at WRJW 106.9 FM, 1320 AM, where your Hawks lead at home, 19 to 13, homecoming night. Put your four fingers in the air. It's the fourth quarter, folks. And uh, see if this Hawks uh, football team can hold on and be uh, 6-0, and you know. Florence Eagles got the first possession of the ha- second half, drove down the field, took a huge amount of time off the clock, and uh, missed the extra point, tied it up 13-13. Hawks answer with a touchdown of their own, and now going into the fourth quarter, lead 19-13. Again, snap the read, he calls his own number on the left side. Again, another touchdown, saving tackle by Tyron Ramsey. Uh, so at this point, you got to have somebody uh, spying or accounting for the quarterback, Luke Reed, who has uh, some pretty good wheels on him. Yeah, you know, maybe you uh, do that with maybe Jeffrey Hopgood or even Aiden Taylor. Oh, it's not going to be like a full timeout, okay. Just a... Uh, all right, so first and 10 Eagles, ball in Hancock territory around the 46-yard line. Reed in the shotgun, three receivers to the left, running back to his left. Look for a handoff probably to the right side here. Handoff around the right side. And going to be met and tackled by Bryce Ladner. Maybe that's the energy that we, uh, this defense needed. They actually gave the guy a yard on the play, but it looks like a looks like it was a loss to me. But um, yeah, it looked like maybe you know maybe either tackled at the line of scrimmage or Bryce got him in the backfield for a loss. And it looks like there's a, a Florence Eagle shaking up on the play. Look like he's sticking it out, toughening it out. That's Nathan Tucker, one of the offensive linemen. So Reed back in the shotgun, two receivers to the right, running back uh, running back to his left. Reed calls his own number to the left. Track down from the back side after about a seven, eight-yard carry. By Aiden Taylor. Um, so, they're basically doing like a quarterback counter, it looks like, right? Um, he takes a hard step to the right, and then he goes to the left, and he has blockers uh, out in front leading. Let him bring up a third in about three situation right here. Again, they set up in the same formation where possibly – could be a handoff to the right side, but no, it's a run again to the left and Reed up the middle. We have to figure this out. Like they still haven't played it, called the play there, and he's gonna be tackled at around the 19 yard line of Hancock. There's a flag on the play right around the 30 yard line. So what they're doing is they they they're blocking down and they uh, they're pulling the backside guard. And this flag is going to be against the Eagles. It looks like it because the Eagles' offense is walking back. 
So that play is going to be negated altogether, possibly. Like it might be coming back. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face mask on the Eagles offense. And you see that. And that's probably. Uh, that takes away a nice run by the quarterback. Personal foul. Face mask. Probably one of the guys that were pulling. And, you know, they try to, you know, you try to get up and. Get up under the shoulder pads, and maybe he came up too high and oh, grabbed the face mask team. or something. But that's going to back the Eagles all the way back to where the original line of scrimmage trade. He's going to bring up third and ten. Now it's up to your our Hawks defense right here, Andre, to step up, make a play, and get the ball back. Yeah, because, you know, uh, it, this could be a game-changing third down play right here for the Absolutely. Hawks Absolutely. In the fourth quarter with nine minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock, you have to stop this play. Reed gets the snap, looking to throw, pump fakes, throws it in the air, has a man, and going to be caught on Caleb Schaefer, with the man on the cover, and gives up a huge throw. Reed fake, fake the pump, like did a fake pump and then went deep and uh, did the smart thing. He used the sideline, right? Uh, you're either going to go incomplete or you're going to give it to where only your man can make the catch, and that's exactly what happened. He put it on the money. Great throw right there by Luke Reed. First and 10, Eagles. Reed in the shotgun. Calls his number on the right side. Not as successful as going to the left side. Maybe a yard or two. Or from my point of view, it looked like a yard or two, but... They marked it as a four-yard game. Oh, second and six for the Eagles. Line, it'll be second down and about six. Eagles got the ball at the Hawks' 12-yard line. Just another big third down we gave up. Because um, I imagine the Eagles probably would have punted it right there and tried to play some defense themselves. Reed in the shotgun, fumbles the snap, picks it up, goes around the left side, tackle forward. Right, going to be about a yard or two short of the first down. Bring up third and two for the Eagles. Need to bring some pressure right here. I know, I know that's a big offensive line, but we got to bring. We got to bring some. Uh, we got to fill every gap. Yeah, you got to find a way. You know, fill every gap because they're they're running pretty much. At every gap. Yeah, I mean, you got to you got to trust your cornerbacks on the outside. Christoph Gagne, uh, you got a cornerback over here on the right side that needs to be pinched in. I think going to be a handoff up the middle. And don't know uh, where they spotted it if it's a first down or not, but if it's a fourth and short, then you got to imagine the Eagles are probably going to go for it right here. There's a flag on the play. There's a flag on the ground. See if this is against the Hawks or not, which then, uh, foul. yes, personal foul on the Hawks. And uh, this has been plaguing the Hawks tonight. They, this is the most penalized game they've had all season. I don't know if the, I wonder if the motions are high, being homecoming, pressure, you know, going to 6-0 and on the season. Uh, you you, you got to let all that go, Dre. You gotta yeah, go, you got to you got to play loose and just play football, have you, fun. Yeah, exactly. You can't let, get caught up in the emotions like uh, Dante Taylor did a while ago, giving an extra fifteen yards on that drive. Um, you just come out and, and play the game that you've been playing all your life. Uh, first and goal for the Eagles. Wing T formation. I mean, I really don't understand this shift. I don't know if it, who's it who's it confusing, but the quarterback sneak. And nowhere. Maybe, maybe a yard, maybe a half a yard. Hawks defense played that one really well. And that was Bryce Ladd. You know, uh, the lower man always wins. Bryce Ladner pretty much took down uh, two of the players right there for the Eagles offensive line. 
he's always known for causing disruption whenever he's on the field, no matter what. Look for the Eagles to probably get to the, try to get to the wide side of the field, Christophe Gagne's side of the field on a power pitch or something. And that's exactly what they run into the left side, but not yeah, outside. And going to be stopped inside the one-yard line for a third down. And you got to imagine they're probably just going to quarterback sneak it right here with the quarterback. And the Eagles looking to take the lead here on the road. This is where you need like a oh, bad spot. Right? Like just inside the one-yard line. Either that or, you know, just a Hawks defense bust the play open. So quarterback under center. Tries the quarterback sneak it and he gets stuffed. He gets stuffed, Dre. He doesn't get it. He doesn't go anywhere. Uh, fourth, fourth down, and you got to imagine. You got to imagine they're either going to try the same play or give it to their big running back up the middle. See if the Hawks defense can hold tight right here, Dre. This is this is crucial. Look. <laughs> It sounds like the crowd, they're getting into it now, getting pumped up. Well, I mean, that, that could be great if we can uh, draw uh, offsides or a false start, I mean, a false start um, if, with the crowd noise, if they can get into it. It actually looked like they backed them up a little bit on that. And they hand it off, and it's a penalty. See if the crowd played their part. Oh, wow. So they're going to move it half the distance to the goal, which is probably like an inch because it was already, I think, inside the one. And not good news for the Hawks as Bryce Ladner's limping off the field. He's a big part of what they do on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. Yeah, absolutely. So don't be surprised if they uh, try to run it to where Bryce Ladner was. Fourth down. This crowd needs to get loud again. You got Reed under the center, high formation. Tries to run it again, and... And here it finally gives the signal in the end zone. The Eagles tie it up, pinning the extra point. And this is a good, tough team that we're facing right here in the Florence Eagles. Tied up 19-19 with four minutes, 52 seconds left in the, in the game. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome to a place where everyone deserves to be better protected. Where technology has your back. Where you can have better protection and keep more money in your pocket. Where you can have protection for your car, your home, your phone, and even your digital identity. You're in good hands with Allstate. Jason Pinot has offices in Poplar Grove and Pickey. The river is rising. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pinot agency a call today. 601-798-7005. Allstate and affiliates offer products and services subject to availability, terms, and conditions. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. And you're listening to us live on WRJW 1320 AM, 106.9 FM. And the Hawks faced with a little adversity after the extra point is good and now trail 20 to 19 versus the Florence Eagles. I believe, Dre, this might be the first time the Hawks have trailed all year. Normally at this point in the game, we've been uh, we've been used to you know them being up pretty big, but uh, the yeah. Eagles came and put them to the test here tonight. I'm trying to remember, maybe early on, maybe uh, maybe did Moss Point score first, and then we then we scored, and then uh, I don't, nonetheless, your Hawks trailing on homecoming night versus the Florence Eagles, twenty to nineteen, and uh, the extra points and the field goals coming back to coming back to haunt you right now, Dre. Yeah, like we said, you know, uh, those four points, they could have been crucial game-defying moments, and it looks like they could play a part in that here. Well, also at this point, uh, we, as a, you know, if 
if I'm the coaching staff, I'm, I'm thinking about going for two points, right? Um, we've having we're having trouble blocking up the middle on the extra point of the field goal. We got we got to if if it's gonna be blocked anyways, why don't I go for two points? See if the offense can get it, but uh, we may need to go for two points for the rest of the season. I don't know. So back deep for the Hawks is uh, Zach Galong and Caleb Schaefer. Hayden Boykin puts a foot into it. Schaefer's going to get it. Schaefer looking for a hole. And Schaefer brings it up to around the 30-yard line for the Hawks with Dylan Moran and the Hawks are looking to go down the field and score. Big play uh, last drive with a 47-yard screen uh, pass to Zach Galong. See if the Hawks offense got it in them again to uh, uh, take some time off the clock and, and get in position for the game winning. Uh, I, I, I don't want to say field goal, Jay. We can get in position to score a touchdown. Oh, yeah, four minutes and 46 seconds to do so. Well, I mean, you got the ball at the 30, and this is where it's going to start at. Hawks moving right to left on your uh, radio dial. Warren in the shotgun. Quick pitch to Galong to the right. Galong cuts back across the grain. Finds another hole, and Galong brings it up to around the 40. Nine-yard carry for Zach Galong. Going to bring up second and one for the Hawks. You know, another thing that's uh, hurt the Hawks tonight is the penalties, right? Yeah, you know, uh, on that one drive alone, they I think it was, what, like three or four penalties. Yep. You had a couple false starts and then a holding penalty. So that's just extra yards you give the, uh, the opposer the team. Moran in the shotgun, hand off to Galong again around the right side. Galong puts his head down, trying to grab the first down. And uh, Galong oh, going to pick up two yards, maybe first three for the Hawks first down. So Hancock methodically moving the ball right now. Keeping it in the, the safest player's hands. A little hand out to Galong. See if he can keep keep the chains moving. And keep the clock moving most importantly. Absolutely. Going to be first and 10 Hancock at around the 42-yard line. Moran in the shotgun. Galong to his right. You got man-to-man -man on the outside down here. Hand off to Galong around the left side. Galong. Has a, and Galong up the sideline. And Zachary Galong brings it inside the 30. <laughs> 31 yards and a Hawks first down. Moran in the shotgun. Galong to his right. Moran rolling right. Looking to throw. And Moran throws it. And, and another penalty. Shooting the Hawks in the foot. Going to be a holding penalty, maybe. They're going to back them up 10 yards, it looks like. There's an eagle also, down. Also look like an eagle down, so we'll be right back at these messages. When it comes to protecting what you love, you want an insurance agent that cares more cares more about your world, more about what you need. And that's exactly what you'll get with Picayune Allstate agent Jason Pikett, an agent who doesn't just know what it's like to live in Picayune, but one who wants to protect life here as much as you do. Contact him for your free quote today. Allstate, you're in good hands. Allstate and affiliates offer products and services subject to availability, terms, and conditions. Allstate Property and Casualty Insurance Company. Highland Community Hospital continues to do what is best for patients in our new wound healing center. Now open and staffed by a specialized team of doctors, nurses, and techs, we treat diabetic patients and others with serious wounds that have resisted traditional treatment and need special care. Located on the first floor in our outpatient department, our medical professionals will tailor a treatment plan to meet your specific needs. Working to treat the whole person and not just the wound. For more information, visit www highlandch.org All right, welcome back Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live on WRJW 106.9 FM 1320 AM. Moran, quick pitch to Galong on the left side. Galong 
puts his head down, brings a, runs over a defender after the 10 yard holding penalty. Bagging the Hawks up to first and 20. Galong picks up six. Going to bring up second and 14. Had an injured eagle on the play, also. That's why we play back to back uh, commercials. It was Xavier Smith. I believe that's their fullback. Moran in the shotgun, running back to his right, two receivers to the right. Double handoff. Galong to Hopgood. And the Eagles oh, read it pretty really good. Not good with the ball. Not much running room. Maybe a yard or two. Gonna bring up third and long. Holding penalty on that uh play. Hurt is bad, Dre. Warren in the shotgun. Looking to throw. Moran, come back to the... Moran keeps it himself, puts his head down. He's going to bring it to around the original line of scrimmage. In that situation right there, Dre, you need your receivers working back towards your quarterback. Yeah, you know, they uh, they had Todd Gita and Neil Anker going deep, and it looked like, you know, when they started coming back towards Moran, it was a little too late there. So Moran probably picked up about... Four yards on the on the carry, and Hawks call a timeout. And we'll be right back after these messages. Let's cook the game. Check out this new 2023 Wildwood Lodge 40 FDEN destination trailer. This 40-footer has a front den floor plan with a king bed, dual entry, and washer dryer hookups. MSRP 76336, reduced to only 43987. You can see multiple pictures of this unit at rvbestprice.com. Make that short drive to Picayune. You'll be glad you did. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live on WRJW 106.9 FM, 1320 AM. And this could be the game, Dre. Fourth and 11 for the Hawks, trailing 20 to 19 here at home versus the Florence Eagles on homecoming night. See what kind of play the Hawks offense draws up right here. It's got to be a good one. You got one-on-one coverage on the uh, down here on the outside. Moran looking to throw. Wide open, Zach DeLong. DeLong puts it down, and DeLong gets enough for the first down. Hawks still alive. 13-yard pass. What a play right there from Moran to DeLong to uh, keep the game alive for the Hawks and pick hey, up the it first was, down. It was, it was uh, you know, ice water in the veins of Moran, but you know what? Ice water in the veins of Zach Galong as well. Um, you know, you faced with a fourth and eleven game on the line. You have to make a play, and you had your two best players uh, complete that for a first down. Moran in the shotgun, quick pitch to Galong on the right side. Galong gets the edge, cuts it up. Galong puts his head down, and Galong picks up about four or five yards at the fourteen yard line. And the Hawks call a timeout. So five-yard carry right there by Zach Galong, and we'll be right back after these messages. Physical therapy has evolved into specialized care for patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Dr. Jamison Dodd with Dodd Therapy Center in Picayune is LSVT Big certified for treatment of Parkinson's disease. LSVT Big trains people with Parkinson's to use their body more normally and improves movements for any activity, whether small motor tasks like buttoning a shirt or large motor tasks like getting up from a sofa or chair or maintaining balance while walking. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call today at 769-242-2636 or stop by at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here at Brett Favre Field in Kill, Mississippi on WRJW 106.9 FM, 1320 AM. And the Hawks faced with adversity down by one point, one minute and 11 seconds on the clock here in the game. And Hawks driving, got it around the 15-yard line. 14-yard line, 15-yard line, second down. Situation, Moran in the shotgun. Fakes the handoff. Throws the out route to Hopgood. Complete. Hopgood. 
Que está agarrando el lado. Come bring up a third down situation, about a three yard uh, reception right there by Hopgood. And this time, a timeout called, uh, called by the Florence Eagles. And we'll be right back after these messages. First Southern Bank. Simple, easy, and user friendly. Come experience community banking featuring online services, 24-hour ATMs, and seven locations in Picayune, Richton, Columbia, Oak Grove, and Petal, and our 24-hour ATM in Korea. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. All right. Welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. On the edge of our seats here, bringing you the game live at Brett Farm Field in Kill, Mississippi, WRJW 106.9 FM, 1320 AM. When your Hawks now faced with another another third uh, down drive, uh, on this drive right here, Dre. Third and about three or four. Uh, interesting, the uh, Eagles called the timeout. Give the Hawks time to think about what they're going to do right here. You got to keep it in the hands of Zach Galang, right? Yeah, he, you know, he's your best player and he's your playmaker. Going in the shotgun, hand in motion left to right. Counter to Galong up the middle. Galong going to get to the 10, about a yard short, maybe a yard and a half short right here. And there's a flag on the play. And it looks like it might be a personal foul on the Eagles, possibly. Flag comes in late. And that's what it is. And the Hawks are going to get an automatic first down with 52 seconds left here on the clock. And this crowd just erupted, Dre. 20 to 19, 52 seconds. Going to bring the ball all the way to the five-yard line. And the penalty was on Boykin. Fifty-two seconds right here, Dre. You got to give this Florence Eagle team credit right now. I mean, they. You know, they're going they're going toe to toe with the Hancock Hawks on the road. Yeah, you know, they're uh, they've given the Hawks their first two tests of the season so far and it's uh shaped up to be a pretty good game here in the Battle of the Birds and the Nest. So, uh, going to be first and goal situation right here, Dre. Hawks come out of the timeout. 52 seconds left on the clock. And again, uh, I think you just you, you have to keep it in the hands of your uh, running back. And a hand off to Galang. Galang up the middle. Put his head down. And they spot him a half yard short, which might be a good thing right now. Might be a half, uh, about a half yard short. Clock's running. 36 seconds on the clock. It's ticking. More ran in the shotgun. Hand off to Galong. Up the middle. Galong. Going to be stopped right here. Clock's ticking. Going to bring a third down situation. And timeout situation. Timeout Hancock. We'll be right back after these messages. First Southern Bank believes that banking should be personal and convenient. And that's exactly the type of service you will receive at First Southern Bank. Open your account at First Southern Bank at 1321 Highway 43 North of Picayune, and you can experience a true hometown banking experience. First Southern Bank is personal enough to handle all your banking needs and big enough to handle all your mortgage needs. Convenient locations, personal friendly service, and mortgage experts. That's First Southern Bank. True hometown banking at its best. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing the game live here in Kill, Mississippi at Brett Farfield. Right now, it's a battle at the nest. 
The Eagles versus the Hawks. Third and goal situation. Looks like the Hawks have it around the two, two and a half, three yard line. So Moran comes on the shotgun. Goes incomplete. They try to play action. Throw it to Braxton Johnson. And Moran's first incompletion of the, of the second half. And Greg, right, this is the this is the game right here. And it looks like Powell and the kicking units out on the field for the Hawks. If if they connect on this, Andre. I mean, this has to be a, a, a quick. I mean, you have to block it up the middle. You have to block it up the middle. They've been coming up the middle. Yeah, that's where the pressure's been at. So, you know, you got to make sure you get that well protected and blocked up. 14, or they got 16 seconds on the clock now. Put it on the foot of power. And a penalty comes. Neutral zone infraction on the Eagles. And they're going to move it up actually a half a yard. Hawk still with the field goal unit on the clock on the field. Got us on the edge of our seat, Dre. Sixteen seconds. Snap it good. Hold is good. Kick is good. Howard knocks it through with nine seconds left on the clock. After having the middle, the middle of that offensive line or that kicking unit. Line getting exposed all night. They held up there. I don't know if he's originally on that that line, but I saw Bryce Ladner in the middle right there on that one, Dre. Like I said, I don't really pay attention. I don't know if he's usually there on those uh, kicks, but snap was good, hold is good, and Legatron puts it through. He puts it through for the short field goal. Um, should be twenty-two to twenty. And there they go, I think they're adding the, the other points. Now, if, if the Hawks can hold on with nine seconds left in the game, uh, I, I'm not I'm sure how many more timeouts the Eagles have. you got to expect some kind of trickery probably on this. So you got to stay in your lanes. You can't, you know, go side to side and, and, and let them uh, – Get something right here on this return, Dre. Maybe Powell needs to uh, boot it as deep as he can to the uh, end zone. That way there's no uh, no type of return right here. Or maybe a sky kick right here, Dre, where uh, you force the Eagles. You force the Eagles to uh, use some of the clock on their turn. Possibly. See what the, what the uh, decision is right here. Powell. Sky kicks it, going to hit the turf, and going to be touched. And that was a bad mistake right there by the Eagles. He doesn't touch that. Goes out of bounds, you get the penalty. for the. Uh, so, one second left the clock. Now, back deep in the defensive backfield for the Hawks is Neil Acker and uh, Trey, Trey Robinson. Robinson. Of course, you got your uh, Tyran Ramsey. Tyron Ramsey, and you got Dante Taylor and... Uh, Mr. Locksmith, Christoph Gagne on the other side. Hawks in a huge prevent defense. You just got to watch the deep middle and, uh, you know, the toss the, the pitches. Yeah, the tossing the ball around. Eight seconds left right here. Not, I think the Eagles are out of timeouts. Only three down linemen on the D line. Reed in the shotgun. Reed. Look at the throw. Throws the out route. 
And with three seconds left on, one second left on the clock, it's going to be first and ten for the uh, Eagles at the 40, 48 yard line. And this is the last play, Dre. And our Hancock Hawks could be going to 6 0. Need some noise out of the fans right here. Read on the shotgun. Keep the ball in front of you here. Absolutely. Two receivers right. Reed looking to throw. Getting pressure. Throws it up. And knocked down in the Hawks. Your Hancock Hawks go to 6 0 on the, on the season. Best start since 20, uh, I mean, uh, 2001. Your Hawks win 22 to 20. A nail biter, Andre. Hey, my ticker ticking. <laughs> Nonetheless, the Hawks come through. Dylan Moran and Zach DeLong on that last drive. Your two senior leaders putting the ball in their hands and saying, hey, we're going to go out this. We're going to win this game on homecoming, even though we're down a point. Faced with a fourth and 11 situation right there, Andre. And uh, Moran finds DeLong. And uh, they get the first down. It, it, storybook ending. Hanks, uh, Hancock moves to six and zero. Oh. We go to uh, West Harrison next week. West Harrison Hurricanes next week. And uh, hey, district play. Now these six games, these nine district games, are the games that are supposed to prepare you to go in the district. Let's see if these games hold up and and show us and build us up to, to who we are in 6A football in this uh, in this district as we travel to uh, West Harrison next week, Dre. Uh, for WRJW 106.9, 1320 AM, and for Hancock Hawks Radio Football, I'm Aaron Underwood. I'm Andre Underwood. And we're out. Hawk Pride.
It's the first time we've been a member 